Of course, only, you know, Twitch chat is on screen, but. <sighs> and YouTube chat, like the stream. As always, VODs can be found at uh, youtube.com at, at Blind Extras a couple days behind. I'm actually really far behind right now. <laughs> and part of the reason for that was I've, YouTube exports have been having a hard time, so I've been having to manually download and upload the VODs, which takes like four times as long for them to process. So like two days later, they'll still be processing. It's been a pain. So I am quite far behind right now, and I apologize, but I will hopefully get caught up by tomorrow. And also, I'm pretty sure I forgot to like save the VOD from yesterday period because yep I absolutely did forget to do that so I have two to download tonight um which has been like I said a bit of a pain but working through it it's probably on YouTube's end usually when Twitch fails to export stuff it's because YouTube changed something and then Twitch is like uh oh okay hold on give us a week and we'll fix it and then it gets fixed eventually um I've heard things about the YouTube API, so it doesn't really surprise me all that much. But, um, so today, uh, stream's going to be a little bit different, all right? Just a little bit different. The The plan is uh, to stream Dwarf Fortress until about 2.50 Pacific time, so it's going to be a bit of a shorter stream today. And then, uh, right in time for 3 p.m., as it says in the YouTube stream thumbnail, or t uh, title, and it should say somewhere in the Twitch title as well, because I've seen Ulfsire's already in the chat, so he's probably noticed. Uh, but we're going to be playing some Path of Acro later today. Uh, there's a sale going on on Steam right now called Turn-Based Fest. And one of the games taking part in Turn-Based Fest is Path of Acra. And part of Turn-Based Fest, they they yell at people like me and say, hey, like, may, what, could, could you please stream this game as part of this sale to talk about it? So we will be uh, streaming some Path of Acra um, later today. And the, the note that I want to state um, is, unlike most of the games on the sale, it is not on sale. And the reason it is not on sale is because it is releasing out of early access very soon. Um, so it'll be kind of like... An example of a game that is launching very soon uh, in on May 7th is the full release for it. So this is the Steam page. It has overwhelmingly positive reviews, 100% positive recent reviews, 99% overall. Um, really cool theory crafting build game. Uh, if you like roguelikes and you like uh, games about creating overpowered builds, this is a fantastic one. Uh, so that that is what we'll be doing a little bit later today. If you want to check the game out, um, I can drop links if you want. But uh, for right now, we're going to go play some more of Apple Bottom, which is the uh, Dwarven Fortress that we've been playing for a while. Um, Over a year, should be good. R -R -R Crypt Metal Crypt Beer. Over a year. A year. El Duderino, thank you very much for this 16th month. Thanks for sticking around, dude. For all this time. It really means, it really means a lot. It really does mean a lot. It's community organized, so there's a ton of non-prominent stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and there's also a lot of streamers uh, streaming games as part of it, so. Whoa! Mate, you've given me 16 months worth of subs, and now you're also giving me an additional five-pack of gift subs? Thank you much, man. It means a lot. Thank you so much, dude. Like, really, seriously, thank you. For that five-pack of gift subs. Most of those were new, too. A lot of new people. Oh, power, JJ. Well, hopefully your power comes back soon. So, um, the named dwarves in the fort currently are... <clears throat> Amethyst. Arende. Baby Blueford. Bastet. Big Bang. Me. Uh, Bolsky. Bonesaw. Cacophony of Stupid. Calcium Crypt. Darius Carbon. Devil Dawn. Uh, Elfie Bean. Fallout Rain. Hand Chest. Cashmere Goat. Lannix, Lockjaw, uh, Merc Domolith, uh, Napalm Sideburns, Neo Kai, Plantarino, Plutarino, not Plantarino. Brain is thinking about plants. Uh, Raging Cave, Rex, Ryan Katsu, uh, Salty Tempest, Sam Texagon, Shionobi, uh, Sits, Statue Sounds, Stingray, Terminal Wetness, Todini. My voice did a weird crack there. And uh, Transfem. UGDPY, Welton Slarge, I definitely butchered that, uh, Holy Spokes, Wuggy McWuggy, Zawari, and that's everybody. As a reminder, on Twitch, 
If you are a tier two subscriber or above, uh, you should have the ability to type an exclamation point D O R F and at somebody. This could be somebody in Twitch chat or YouTube chat. Uh, and then we can, uh, the rest of chat can veto it. This can happen every 30 minutes globally. Uh, the rest of chat can veto it, but um, if you do that, um, then I ask chat to vote. And if they vote yes, then you can name anybody, anything you want, within reason. Um, that is just a reminder. Of course, the Dwarf Redemptions should be up as well. It should be working. Uh, so this is a stupid contraption I'm making. The idea of this is this is going to part the Dwarven Sea, and my goal for today is to get it mostly functional. We're going to be building a roof on this today. So, that is the plan. Um, and also, get it all the way to the end, which it's it's getting there. I mean, I could just probably actually do this. All the way up to here. It's stupid and it still works. Is it stupid? I yes, very stupid, very very stupid dwarf trick. Um, so this, like I said, is going to be, I like I've said a million times, this is going to be the the baddies entrance. Actually, you know, we might as well make it go all the way to the end. It's not going to take that much more at this point. We've gone we've gone so far. We might as well finish what we started, right? Um, let's go all the way up to here. And it's not like I'm going to run out of obsidian anytime soon. Okay, so the idea of this is to part the part the entire lake. Go for someone, next person that speaks, or just add somebody at Ord if, if you want to give it to somebody. Unless you want to take it yourself. I don't think you have a dwarf. Um, and a uh, bunch of weapons were stolen and stuff by Kias. That sucks. Um, all of the deaths we've had in this fort have been because I failed artifacts, and I failed quite a few of them. Um, admittedly, I, I wasn't the most attentive yesterday. Uh, which is not the best thing ever. But um, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, we've basically decided that this is the last fort I'm going to run before Adventure Mode comes out. Um, which is a kind of exciting prospect, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I will probably just be retiring this fortress, as we're just mostly messing around. But uh, we are nearing the end of this period of Dwarf Fort, basically. The, the pre-adventure mode existence era. Which means uh, my goals for this fort are to finish this stairwell, this spiral stairwell, all the way down into here, finish decorating this area, making it look pretty, finish building this, which we started yesterday. This is a barracks and a hospital, proper hospital, um, and finish beautifying and bedrooming uh, as much of this fortress as possible. Because currently, um, we still don't have enough bedrooms. So we're going to be making a lot of bedrooms today. And uh, on top of all of that, um, trying to turn up the population and get as many dwarves as possible. That is, that is the goal for this fort. Let's see how many dwarves we can actually get populated into this fortress. Just the city in the caverns is expanding as much as I can make it. Could you, I, you could be a dwarf. You could be a dwarf. Okay, what kind of dwarf would you like to be? If I sort by happiness, uh, we have this very happy child. Uh, we have a very happy lady. Uh, we have a very happy boy child. Uh, we have Zeng the weaponsmith, who's very happy. Uh, we have Katan the metalsmith, who's very happy. What kind of dwarf would you like? Any preference? The other stuff is nice. I mean, so to those of you who watched the video I uploaded this morning, there is a light of that article on PC Gamer that I think is really, 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 really interesting. There is a line in that that I think is really interesting, which is they've never pushed the button to send out news saying, hey, game's on sale since Dwarf Fortress came out. To everybody, like if you wishlist a game, the developers get a button to say notify wishlists basically, or in this case, the publisher. They've apparently never pushed that, <clears throat> which I wouldn't know because I, you know, already own it. Sleepy Moon Moth, it is good to see you. I haven't seen you in a bit. I hope you've been doing all right. But uh, it's really kind of exciting to hear that. 
because it, it's just exciting. I don't know. I'm curious to see what, how that's going to go. Um, Laya, thanks for the 14th of monthth. An email discount if you discount it 20% plus. Yeah, but they haven't posted notices about any of their patches or anything. So. We're going to uh, queue up some smoothing first. That's one of the first things I'm going to do. But, uh, Ordith, did you let me know what kind of dwarf you'd like? Be a dwarf. Uh, Ordith, do you just want me to uh, give you a random happy dwarf? Do you have beard preference? If you have beard preference, let me know, and I can just give you a happy dwarf. This is going to be a lot of smoothing jobs. Random happy dwarf, no beard prep. Okay, so I will give you the first green happy dwarf. If that works. Who isn't named, obviously. But let's let's go with an adult. Let's give you uh, Unib the Boyer, meditating on mountains. 71 years old. Yeah, there's apparently more than a million people who have Dwarf Fortress wish listed and 800,000 sold. I just want them to hit a million, just because that would be a really cool number to hit, you know? Can you be a random one, please? Just a happy one? Do we have any tier two subs who want to authorize that, authorize that vote? Uh, maybe have a little bit more faith in yourself. She is often inflamed. I mean, you could you could die pretty quick if you try to die pretty quick. Let me tell you that. Uh, she is often inflamed by hatred and easily develops hatred towards things. Uh, she finds a chaotic mess preferable to the to the boredom of harmonious living. She presents herself modestly, frowns on any flashy. Uh, she presents her. Blah, 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 blah. She she finds a ca mm. She presents herself modestly and frowns on any flashy accomplishments. Uh, she is very curious and sometimes to her detriment. Doesn't often feel envious of others and doesn't try to get things done perfectly. Uh, she is moved by art and natural beauty, and she is uh, she hmm. she's moved by art and natural beauty, and she is somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or live differently from herself. She doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges, and is not inherently proud of her talents and accomplishments. Uh, she tends to be to, she tends to take offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful, and she is quite polite. She generally uh, is quite confident in her ability when undertaking specific ventures. She tends to not reveal personal information and is not particularly interested in what others think of her. She doesn't cling tightly to ideas, is open to changing her mind, and needs alcohol to get through the working day, and uh, doesn't really care about anything anymore. She dreams of crafting a masterwork someday and personally thinks that there is something deeply wrong with people that persevere through their... Uh, that persevere through adversity. And you know what? Because I'm technically a tier two subscriber. Chat room. What do you think? Does Plot Pori deserve a random dwarf? You can vote. Yes or no. Uh, personally thinks that there are, there's something deeply wrong with people that persevere through adversity uh, and sees working hard as a foolish waste of time and does not particularly does not particularly value the truth and dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. Remember, this is something anybody who has tier two or tier three can do, and it has a 30 minute cooldown, which is what I just did. My, my major, my next major change, which I'm going to try and get done over the weekend, is I'm going to add a sound to it, so it'll play a sound when it plays to make it a little bit more obvious. If anybody has ideas of the sort of sound, I was thinking like a bell or something, you know, something that's like dong or something. Maybe a big clang like a cowbell. Like you know, you know what? Actually, what I should do is I should go like sample a like the cowbell from Hair on the Dog from Nazareth, just like tonk, 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 tonk. That's what it should be. The cheer from Drinking Industry. Mm. I think it needs more cowbell, personally. Oopsies. Oh, that, that, I tried to hit the uh, turn my camera back on button, and say I hit that button with it. not the turn my camera back on button. That's kind of the opposite, actually. Oh, also, uh, I'm just going to do a thing real quick. Ulfsire, I'm sending you a DM.
That seems fine. I can see the corner of a giant spider while typing in Discord. Hmm. Also, apparently the most recent unstable update in RimWorld is really broken. Uh, the dead walk, hide while you still can. Ooh, what the fuck is that? What even? Okay, so it's naked. It's, it's a creature. A large hairy worm. What? It has lo it has two long straight horns. Its charcoal hair is patchy. It's kind of somewhere between happy friendly dinosaur friend and like murder beast. This night creature was first created accidentally by the dwarven necromancer Unib of Steelsmiths after horrible experiments gone wrong on giant bush tits. No kidding. In Tundra Hole in the year 486. And then, of course, these things. We know these are quite weak. These are experiments on horses. But I'm scared of these because of this. Very large. How about you? Very, okay, actually, they're not that big. Very large is like a moose, basically. You have to be worried when it says towering or gigantic. Or huge. Barney gone cocaine? Yeah, no kidding. All right, well, before we do anything with this, um, chat room, what kind of dwarf are we giving to Pot Pori? A company of rims is apparently my woodworkers guild. Um, and uh, I guess they make like a lot of drums. <laughs> And the Tin Coven is the religion that Ordith is a member of. Ordith has no family, but does have a lot of friends and worships Adil, who's the god of um, mountains. Fire Stupid, thanks for the three bucks. This is military, chat saying military. One for Potter, two for military. Why is the mad scientist plan on planning on draining the lake? Because it's cooler to make the baddies enter through the lake than any other way. Um... Chat, should I put them in Baby Blueford's squad? Zwerry's squad? Or Lockjaw's squad? The other squad is, per is currently like not actually doing anything and doesn't have anything assigned and no training. Lockjaw, the barricaded bells. Okay, so for reference, Baby Blueford's squad is the most trained. Zwerry's squad is the second most trained. Lockjaw is the newest, but they're all the most enthusiastic. So Lockjaw, okay. They're also the least armed. Uh, but they still are like experts. Like they're, they're not bad. They, they just, they, they are, they have, they've seen the least combat. So the interesting thing about this siege is they haven't sieged us in three years, maybe more. Uh, he is prone to hatreds and often develops negative feelings. He is dour as a rule and conflicted by this. He values parties and merrymaking in the abstract. Often feels discouraged, is stubborn, though he is conflicted by this part of himself as he is quite ambitious. Uh, he doesn't often feel envious of others, has a little has little interest in joking around, is assertive, doesn't seek out excitement, occasionally overindulges, and has a sense of duty. Likes to keep things practical without delving too deeply into the abstract and laughs loudly whenever he's surprised, needs alcohol to get through a working day, and bites his nails when he's thinking. I imagine this dwarf runs into combat laughing. Very easy to imagine that. Dreams of mastering a skill, personally, is affronted by the whole notion of maintaining decorum and find so-called dignified people disgusting. Views tranquility as one of the highest ideals and thinks there is something deeply wrong with people who persevere through adversity. And, uh, like, steel, Goshenite, and Glumprong wood. Worships Sim, the god of deformity, and uh, is, of course, a member of the Faith of Spit because of this. Also a member of the Coastal Guild, which is our Farmer's Guild, and a militia dwarf of the fortress of apple bottom um okay so the first thing i need to do is jump to the surface and jump to where this siege is coming in 
I need to make sure everybody's assigned to this. And unpause and see how bad it is. Okay, that's 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 pretty bad. Um so let's zoom out a little bit. Close this real quick. Just so that we can prep. Um Dwarves are going to immediately start running back inside. Well, it's potentially pretty bad. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, because we might just actually have to fight this. I am sending the military upstairs. Um, Well, not, not quite there. Let's send them here. Uh, these are going to be closed immediately. The dwarves should get here quite quickly. Here they come. Siege is walking in. Okay. Gates are shut, so that's good. Let's see how bad it actually is. Okay, that, that never mind. I changed my mind. That is not so bad. Um, did the necromancer leave? No, that's the threat. So these necromancers, for reference, um, they're actually not a married couple, but th this necromancer's husband has been here before. This necromancer's master, uh, or th this master, this necromancer's apprentice, I threw into the lava in the basement. Um, and so Unib here uh, is the master of Eral. So it's it's a necromancer and their apprentice, basically here. Um, both of these necromancers are mem were previously members of our faction before they were exiled. Um, in fact, this one was the Count of Craft Claude, which is one of our for one of the fortresses in our faction, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, they don't have any relatives in my fort, but they do have relatives in the area. These necromancers are very heavily connected to us. Um, so we have two options here. We can just fight them because these don't actually seem too scary. These, these accidents, when you read that they are accidentally made, they're generally not as scary. They're usually just huge meat shields. These zombies are not a threat. They don't have any, un any intelligent undead. The scary thing would be these guys resurrecting stuff. So we have two options. We can charge in and just try and fight them. Hopefully kill the necromancers quickly and then clean up the, the remains. Or we can wait until the necromancers leave, which shouldn't be too long, and then charge in. I'm voting we just charge in because it's fun. So, what do you think, chat? Chat saying Leroy Jenkins? Okay. I will pull the lever a second time. This also gives our dwarves a chance to get inside. I'm going to go here and... Ooh. Uh, I'm actually just going to go here and just... Pause, 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 pause. And I'm going to go uh, into this menu again until I hit the screw pumps. These are all going to be paused because this is what all the dwarves are constructing right now. Just need all of these constructions paused. Just for the screw pumps specifically. It's funny, like, yesterday was, like, notably, like, quiet. Leroy Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins, there we go. Are you running around in fear? No, you're just going to... Oh, you're probably constructing the last floor piece. Okay, so the necromancers are charging the front door. And then turning around... Okay, nobody's coming to pull it. That's the problem. Ah, great. That, that was actually a really good opportunity. What? Wait, 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 wait. They're in conflict with something. Something a little bit scary is there is actually some bodies in the lake here that could just come crawling out. Uh, it seems like Bol Bolski is taking a nap. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Dwarf pulled the lever. Doors open. Critters are coming, seems like. Let's see who comes in first. Got scared of some bodies in the river. No, 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 no. They're probably getting attacked by giant birds. This is an untamed wild biome. Um, oh, it's giant thrips and a giant kia are on the map right now. So they're probably getting dive bombed by giant birds. If they're if they're getting attacked by anything, it's probably the thrips or the kia. So if they're running in fear from something, it's probably the thrips. So the first dwarf corpse comes into the fortress. The benefit of these guys actually is they do have pretty decent gear. And because our materials are very limited, um, anything helps. Uh, the very brave Potpourri of all dwarves charges in first directly towards the zombie warrior and begins stabbing. He is horrified while in conflict, but gets a very expertly placed stab directly in the head with a steel spear, tearing the muscle and fracturing the skull. That might have killed him if it was alive. Um, and then this, and then a tendon in the skull has been torn, the force twists the neck, and a tendon in the upper spine has been bruised, and the mace dwarf strikes, but the spear dwarf expertly blocks the shot, and the zombie is immediately executed by the new soldier Potpourri. Vengeful joining an existing conflict. Very, very impressive. Charges forward directly towards the rest of the dwarves. Some of the dwarves are waiting behind going, ah. I think because we've got dwarves charging, might as well move the rest of the squads up. Potpourri charges directly towards the next zombie, bouncing off in a, in a, in a quick parry with the two monstrous mistakes behind him. Uh, he is now in a martial trance, stabbing at the mace dwarf corpse in the head, repeatedly fracturing the skull. What a good hit. Jesus, this dwarf needs a raise. Uh, it's a shame we don't get paid. Strikes it a second time, and I think that's his second kill. Yes, he has now killed two zombies in Apple Bottom right at the very beginning. Chat room, can I get a vile force of darkness and a round of beers in both chat rooms, please? <clears throat> and then um, the spear dwarf uh, stabs the mace dwarf corpse in the head and literally beheads it, which is what uh, downs the creature. I think destroying a spine is actually a way to kill a zombie. Um, and then we have these two towering beasts, and now we find out how strong uh, Fath and Athil are. Um, the dwarves move up to the creatures, and immediately one of them falls. Um, the militia strikes the disaster of night in the body, Bruising the muscle with his shield, that definitely wasn't the killing blow. Underneath it is Tosid, right? Um, you didn't get the kill either. Who did, though? Um, well, it looks like it was Potpourri actually striking the disaster of the night in the head with an iron shield, bruising the muscle and bruising the brain. Literally smacked it in the head. Okay, okay, it can't be that big. They move up to the second one. Ikor is spraying everywhere. The baby who is along for the ride alongside of Stingray is going... Didn't feel anything after seeing the disaster of the night die. Seems like a good soldier in training. Anyway, uh, next creature is uh, enraged at all enemies and bleeding and being stabbed by uh, the militia captain. Uh, the militia captain stabs the disaster of the night in the lower body with a steel spear, tearing the muscle and tearing the guts. The disaster looks sick. The disaster of the night strikes at the militia captain, but the shot is blocked with a steel shield. Uh, the dwarves move forward. We uh, still have Potpourri in a martial trance, bits and pieces flying every everywhere, and that's the second one to fall. Of course, they could stand back up. Have the, night ma have the necromancers left the map? That is the next thing we need to check. It looks like they have. Okay, so um, now all we have left are the invaders. Do not mind the ratmen. So we just have all of these creatures, mostly. Yeah, so we're through the zombies. The necromancers have left. The biggest threat is gone, and it's now all these guys up here. Um, I'm going to tell my squads to actually back back up into here. Uh, if they decide to, if they don't, that's okay too. I can move them forward again. Uh, blood just fell off. Okay, it's Wolverine Man blood. That's fine. Um, never mind. This is, it's just a big old stack of dwarves and then creatures coming around the corner. Move back up, dwarves. Uh, the next round of dwarves move forward. Lockjaw, the militia captain, who is wielding a uh, god metal flail, is up front. Actually bites the beast of the night's third left foot, bruising the muscle. The captain latches on firmly. The militia captain uh, strikes at the beast with in the thorax with her iron shield, bruising the muscle. Very efficient. I'm very impressed. Where the fuck did that bolt come from? They have weapons? Oh, I see. Is it you? Ah, that makes sense. So there are still some corpses on the map. I was like, these don't have weapons. Where did that bolt come from? I was very concerned for a moment there. Uh, the dwarves are charging forward and uh, bits and 
pieces are starting to go everywhere. We have blood coming out, uh, which is the white stuff because they are forgot. They they are uh, creatures of their night creatures. Uh, the militia captain is punching it, dude. You you literally you have a flail. Use your flail, mate. You lo use. Use the flail, dwarf. Um, the militia captain bashes the uh, knight's beast in uh, the head with her... Ah, oh, there we go. Bruising the muscle. Sweet. So you are actually using it now. Awesome. So for those of you who missed the description of these creatures, these are large uh, feathered hexapods. Uh, it has large mandibles and charcoal feathers, uh, which are long and narrow. This knight creature was first created by the dwarven necromancer Unib uh, of Steelsmiths after... Uh, after horrible experiments on horses. Um, the dwarves are now fighting with the spider-like creatures. I'm looking at my dwarves. Uh, Tosid here is stunned. However, Tosid is one of my um, recruits, so very recent recruits to the military. Actually hacks the knight's beast in, in the right first leg with the steel battle axe, tearing apart the skin. And the recruit hacks the knight's beast uh, right third leg uh, with his steel battle axe, and the severed part sails off in an arc. Now... I'm going to pause for this fight for a second, which I do realize is very, very, very exciting, um, to uh, note that I really need to upgrade my hospital, and I'm a little scared I'm going to need it in a moment. So I'm just going to do this real quick. I realize it's not going to be the fanciest looking thing in the world, um, but this is the room that's going to be my upgraded hospital. Currently, my hospital does not have any beds, um, so or only has three beds. So in the off chance that we actually need more hospitals, hey, look at you, slacker. Terminal wetness taking a nap. Lazy bloody dwarf. Anyway, um, <laughs> this dwarf was told to go fight. <laughs> Instead, just like left and went and took a, went and took a snooze. Um, so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to add a bunch of beds in here. I'm going to uh, put two chests in here. And I'm just going to make this into a meeting zone and connect it to the hospital. We're just going to do that like right now. Um, because even though this ain't done yet, it's I, I need the extra beds in the hospital, so we're just we're just going to do that. Uh, Bengski, evening, how are you? Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pretty greatly increase the number of materials in the hospital. Actually, might as well just set everything to 20. We don't have any soap in the hospital. We do need to sort that. But, um... That, that'll help. Very dwarfish to sleep in full armor. Naturally. I mean, it's comfier than the beds. Um, let's also do rock table. 20. Let's do cloth rope. Should have a bunch of cloth. Actually, I, I might need to do yarn rope. Um, and then traction benches. So, actually, let me just search mechanisms real quick. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Back to the thing we're actually here for. <laughs> uh, we've got several dwarves running up um, uh, with that appear to not have weapons. I'm just double checking they actually do. Yeah, they're all using Bismuth Bronze Warhammers. Uh, this is Bolski, who finally woke up from his nap. Uh, we got a lot of thirsty dwarves. We really need to give these dwarves new stuff. I'm really curious to see how this uh, recruit does. Um, I'm going to move a few turns forward as Tosid uh, is dodging bolts and fighting with the creature. There's actually blood on the ground, which usually means it's dwarven blood. That's actually Bl Baby Blueford's blood. Where is Baby Blueford? So Baby Blueford is actually bleeding heavily. Uh, got bit by the knight's, by, by the knight's beast um, in the right ear. Bruising the right island skin uh, through the uh, cave spider silk shirt. That's not good. Um, we're also in an ad break. We're going to be in an ad break in a minute, so I will pause the fighting when the ad break pops in case anybody gets hit with an ad. Um, that's a little bit scary. However, the creature has lost uh, a leg. That's not too bad. I mean, it's... Okay, your hand is also torn open. Never mind. That might, that might actually be a little bit worse. Her head is bruised. Her left upper arm is mangled. Uh, good thing we're upgrading that hospital, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but fortunately, most of them are dead. It's it's literally just this one who's left, and then the one over here, from what I can tell. Uh, the siege hasn't broken yet. What kind of threats do they still have? Let's actually find out real quick. Okay, so there's still a good number of them. They're mostly up there. Oh, boy. Um, well, let's move a few forward. Um, we can see blood on the ground still. How's Baby Blueford doing at the exact moment? In pain, in pain and bleeding. Um, Baby Blueford may actually ditch backwards to... Uh, go heal a little bit possibly but no it's clearly not bad enough that they are um you know 
retreating. Yep, the bleeding has stopped. That's good. Um, has actually killed a zombie dwarf at this point. Uh, Darius is doing well. Um, bit in the eye. Yeah, imagine getting bit in the eye. Good lord. And uh, the hammer dwarf bashes the knight's beast in the first leg uh, with a bismuth bronze warhammer, uh, bruising the skin. So seems like all of our dwarves here are doing well. UGDPY is a dwarf that joined the military because they were the most stressed dwarf in the fort. And one of the things, two of the things they really wanted to do was fight and get martial training. So you're just kind of here now. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> um, it's a bit late. I didn't actually remember that I'd done that, but uh, you know. Um, meanwhile, a corpula corpulent uh, statue sounds is terrified, but uh, hopefully, are, is at least one of these dwarves focused? Are, are none of these dwarves focused? That's a little scary. Uh, baby Blueford sh it should be focused, but isn't currently. Yeah. Uh, Zwar, uh, okay. I, I think a a lot of the a lot of these dwarves are actually not doing too too bad. Not too, too bad. They all need to pray, though, so we'll have to give them a, a break. Just got here with sieging. Uh, necromancers. So that. <laughs> um, these were once, uh, like, they're, they're worms with a Y. I actually don't know what a W-Y-R-M is. A worm is in Europa mythology. It's a. Uh, it's often depicted as a snake of considerable size and somehow related to dragons. So these ones look like dinosaurs. Van Ori, thank you very much for the tier one for 14 months. It's good to see you. Yeah, I was confused. Worms and wyverns. I will say that. Limbless, wingless dragon. I'm just going to state that these ones ain't limbless, but. That's just because they visibly have legs. They do look like T-Rexes to me. And from giant bush tits, yes. Is literally pest. <laughs> In old English. That is... Huh. Funny. That is really funny to me. Alright, so... We are through the ad now. Let's get back to the action. I have a feeling this... Hey, hey chat. So far in this fight, would you say uh, thumbs up? YouTube? Clip? I think this would make for a good YouTube clip. We got uh, more creatures moving towards. Uh, the dwarves are all stacking on top. I'm a little bit worried about our recruits, and some of the dwarves are thirsty, but honestly, this could go a lot worse than it seems to have so far. Um, I think my plan is, after the fight over, to just lock the uh, door and give the dwarves a chance to recover. Uh, they charge towards the final zombie, which is just a crossbow zombie, which will probably die pretty quickly. Um, all it was really doing was forcing us to stop... Um, dodging and it, it dies very quickly and then the dwarves run towards the actual looming threat coming down the side of the hill. Uh, the axe dwarf who's up at the front, Imush, um, who is a member of the Bulbous Furnaces, has killed one zombie so far. Actually hasn't managed to hit anything yet. Um, right next to Potpourri. What's how's Potpourri doing? You, you, are, are you doing? Okay, you're do considering this is Potpourri's first fight. Three zombies, two disasters of the night, which are the big guys. So, um, it's not that many. It could be a lot more. Ralazumo. Ra uh, chat room, can I get a round of beer for good luck for these dwarves? Because they're going to need it later. Get those beers poured. They charge forwards. The fact that they're also coming down in a sort of single file is an advantage to us as well. Um, two of them fall almost immediately with bits and viscera flying everywhere. Uh, Kavish here actually dodged directly underneath one of their abdomens, which flew up and over. Uh, it's a bad planet, a bug planet. The fact that I, a bug even thinks is offensive, clearly, and uh, for democracy, I suppose. Um, throw all the references and buzzwords out so that all of the algorithms pick up the sound bites. Um, right here, uh, uh, we, we've got uh, Potpourri on the front line, Imush on the front line, and Ubal. Imush has finally gotten their hits in, um, most recently punching the Night's Beast in the right mandible. Not my mandible! Uh, uh, bruising the muscle, and the force pulls the head. Uh, the axe dwarf then hacks the, um... 
uh, hacks the knight's beast in the third foot with her steel battle axe, and the severed part sails off in an arc. As you can tell with these dwarves' gear, I'm focusing more on high-quality weaponry and less so on met on armor because I just I don't have a lot of armor. These dwarves are going to need new clothes, though. Uh, their clothes have all taken a beating. Uh, this dwarf's pants are, like, almost ready to fall to pieces. Uh, they The hammer dwarf kicks the knight's beast in the thorax with her right foot, bruising the muscle and bruising the heart. It'll never love again, truly. Um, the dwarves continue to move through through the absolute wall of enemies, and I have a feeling that, well, Zon, this creature of the night doesn't feel anything. I was gonna say, I have a feeling they're terrified, but I guess they just don't feel anything. How about you? Grouchy, 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 exasperated. Okay, well, they don't really care. They're pretty emotionless, I would say. More bits and pieces fly out, and UGDPY hasn't killed anything, but did get to hack the knight's beast in the first foot with her steel battle axe bruising the, bruising the fat. The battle rages, I must press on, they say. Um, I am actually kind of curious. Okay, so I'm going to search by the most upset dwarves. Yep. Yep, thought so. Thought so. We, we had improved this dwarf all the way up to, like, no longer being that pissed. I think UGDPY has had a good time as a tourist here in the military. Her leg is bruised. She literally just has an axe and a shield. I think I'm going to boot them out. Like, just just get out of the military. Drop your axe and run, dwarf. Just drop your axe and run. You are literally a recruit. You're the only dwarf that's tantrumed in the fort. I put you in the military to fill a need. I think you need to go back down to the tavern and keep singing. Um, how high did I set mineral scarcity? Uh, it's the second rarest. Um, I never set it very high. I do not like high mineral scarcity. Uh, the MoMA's, uh, the, and this, this area is particularly scarce, partially because of how shallow it is. It's only like 40 layers deep. Um, and, uh, also because of, uh, the fact that there's technically only iron here. So I have found iron. I found one weird patch of tetrahedrite and there's a little bit of aluminum. That This is how I like to play the game. If minerals aren't scarce, I feel like I'm not playing Dwarf Fortress. Um, we move up through these guys. We, who, these worms appear to have been quite weak, at least in the initial beginning of the fighting. Um, yep, they're dropping pretty quickly. We've got two down already. Um, Shield Standards has actually killed one um, almost immediately. Got it by striking it in the lower body with a steel shield, bruising the guts. Uh, it seems, has Imwish killed one? Imwish has done some damage. Uh, strikes at the Disaster of Night in the head with the pummel of a steel battle axe, bruising the fat and tearing the neck, and then hacks it in the lower body of the steel battle axe and the severed part sails off in an arc um, we've got another one who is moving forward who's mildly annoyed when caught in the rain and doesn't feel anything while joining an existing conflict the combat starts with the creature uh, it actually misses my axe dwarf uh, and then moves forward hacks the gets hacked by an axe dwarf in the lower body with a steel battle axe which tears the skin the disaster of night then hacks then misses once again and has been knocked unconscious because the uh, mace dwarf scratches the disaster of the night in the head tearing the skin, bruising the muscle, and bruising the brain, which is enough to knock it unconscious. The, for the force bends the neck. The dis disaster falls over. Axe Dwarf hacks the disaster of night in the head, and the severed part sails off in an arc. Very quick, well done fight. Obviously because I'm wish here who did the deed was in a martial trance, uh, which negates any exhaustion in the fight. The martial trance then moves forward. I see the dwarves having no problem with the remainder of this fight. They are fighting up the side of the hill. Uh, more disasters of the night are coming down the hill. Uh, this dwarf is irritated, dwelling upon wearing old clothing. Well, we need to get that shit sorted um and uh that's that's my next job i think is to get this the uh old clothing sorted they move up uh it appears that moma's here just got one yeah looks like it hacks the disaster of night the night in the upper body with a steel battle axe and the injured part is cloven asunder uh stuko's here uh also slapped it uh with the flat of their battle axe it appears that there's one of the creatures left at least in this rush there's one down in combat who just fell second uh spider-like creature just fell this one's immediately bleeding very heavily and um the axe dwarf actually bit it uh in the mouth as you do uh latched on firmly and then uh bites it again in the lower body, tearing the muscle, and uh, then scratches it in the head. You know you have weapons, right? Uh, and then disaster misses it again, or tried, but it was actually parried or blocked by the by the shield. The hammer dwarf then bashes the disaster of the knight uh, with her bismuth bronze war hammer, bruising the muscle and bruising the guts. Uh, hacks the disaster of knight with her steel battle axe, and the severed part sails off in an arc. Um, how many left? Let's see. There's got to be at least one. Okay, so there there is one left. It's not too far away. It is the final of the creatures we must kill. Tell the remainder of the dwarves to go get it. Um, and it moves up. The dwarves run at it very quickly. 
and the creature falls almost immediately. And um, it appears that uh, Stingray uh, dropped her baby, but uh, has come back to get it. We do have some injured dwarves. Bolski is injured. Let's just set you there so we can go get you. I say fight well. What Fight well done. Oh, I see why we can't get him, because he's actually a layer lower than that. Oh, he's moved. <laughs> Buddy, stop moving. We're coming to get you. Oh. The, the, the dwarf is doing the very logical military thing, which is trying to fight with the giant Kia, and then walked a few steps and died. He was trying to fight with the giant Kia. Olski. Bloody shame that you had to go that way. What was the last thing Bolski said or did? There it is. The Hammer Dwarf misses the Disaster of Nights after um, getting gored. Okay, so uh, in the last few fights, in the last few moments of the fighting, the Hammer Dwarf attacked the Disaster of Night, but it jumped away. Did you already have injuries before that? Okay, so he was doing real well. He was striking, uh, bashing, bashing with his hammer, doing very well. Um, and then Bolski, uh, missed, got, uh, dodged, attacked, and missed. Um, and that miss probably made him stagger. Uh, and that was enough for the Disaster of Night to gore the Hammer Dwarf in the head, bruising the muscle and fracturing the skull through the wool hood. The force twists the neck, tearing apart the skull, and tearing apart the upper spine's nervous tissue. Um, the Disaster, uh, Bring out today. yeah, naturally. An artery was opened by the attack. A tendon was torn. Uh, the dwarf lose, lost hold of his spear, dropped it, loses, lost hold of his war hammer, and then uh, missed the disaster of night and said, In our time in the realm of destiny is so brief. This does not scare me. And then as he was crawling a few moments later, he said, I've been injured badly. I can't keep it together. Rest in peace. In peace. Bolski. You were a hero. That dwarf deserves a statue. A steel statue. What an absolute beast of a dwarf. So, what weapon were you using? I would like to um, see what weapon he was using for the reason of I would like to memorialize his weapon with him. He was a hammer dwarf. Where did he lose hold of his hammer? I just want to see where it landed. There. This is his steel shield and this is his hammer. All right, um, two seconds, chat, real quick. I'm going to put a marker in chat so I know where to do it. I need to take a piss, apparently. Coffee, and we'll be right back. Cheese for everyone! Bark, 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 See how he bites off the shell to get at the nut? But yeah, that's our that's our first military casualty. Let's make a lovely turkey. Let's make it. Remove everything that's good from it. The seeds, the vitamins, the nutrients, everything that's good about it. And just jam it full of shit garbage shit sugar. And put it in a shit bottle that sounds like shit when you put it on your shit. It's shit. Stop eating ketchup. That is our first military casualty. It's Polsky. 
Vengeance must be swift, I say. There's also a few bodies in this area down here that we can deal with. I'm just going to make sure that this, no it's not, is in the burrow now. We're going to wait a little bit before we... Um... He died happy too. Because it gives you their last thoughts. That dwarf was very happy when he went. Does this mean I'm going to raise a necromancer tower in the future? This one? No. No, no, no. No, the last fort was a necromancer tower. This one is not going to be a necromancer tower. There we go, they found him. Oh no, I, I might crush that tower just for killing Bolski. Just found out why you were having FPS. Uh, you peeked back out to the caves after sealing off your area. 150 caves swallow people invaders. You, you know, if they're causing you frame rate issues um, and you don't want them or you want to get rid of them um, or you want way less of them, if you go to your difficulty settings so you go to settings you go to difficulty and you click custom if you scroll down a little bit there's a very specific trigger here which is cavern dweller scale um if they're causing lag for you cut these numbers in half because they send by default they send 10 per attack right with a maximum of 50 this is per tile right so the default map is four by four, meaning you can have a maximum of 200 per layer at a time by default. If you want to drop this to a number where they're much more reasonable, but still a lot of fun, I find that they're really fun in pairs of two and maximum of 10. Um, because then it's like very small numbers, but they're still scattered around and they still attack. Um, but they're much more reasonable, or you can just disable them entirely. Um, so, I'm just going to put them back to the... Well, I might actually put them to 2 and 10, because that is usually where I have them. But, like, just if, if you want them to be much more reasonable... Um, yeah. I, I know that uh, some uh, there was some one person I was watching once who uh, was having problems with frame rate, and they did have DF hack running. I told them to type in the exterminate command, and they were playing, I, I want to say it was a 7x7 seven seven map, and they had like 800 of them. <laughs> it was like, uh, what? So, cave swallows are particularly bad because they can fly. They're riding giant rats too. Yeah, they can also bring animals. So this dwarf is just going to be taken down underground to a stockpile first, which is fine. Yeah, exterminate is a very useful command if you're trying to fix, like, frame rate for sure. Um, if you want to get rid of their bodies, select them all as dump. If you're just using a lot of DF hack anyway, like I, I never actually recommend people abuse the use of DF hack, but if you want to get rid of their bodies as if they were never there, um, select them all, set them to be dumped, and then type in auto dump dis type space destroy, um, and it'll just to destroy everything that is, um, you know. Um, difficulty in Dwarf Fortress is very relative. Um, most of the Dwarf difficulty in Dwarf Fortress is not... It's, it's, it's almost entirely dependent on the neighbors and the world. Um, even the difficulty slider just makes sieges more frequent, which just makes the enemy run out of stuff more often, right? Um, I am a bad person to ask this question somewhere on over there. I don't think anything in Dwarf Fortress is necessarily difficult. Adventure mode can be very difficult. Fortress mode is a very, 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 very easy sandbox for me. So I'm not the right person to ask. Things can be very annoying uh, and very frequent, but I don't think that there's anything in Dwarf Fortress that's actually 
definable as difficult. So I am the wrong person to ask that question. Actually, while I'm at it, uh, could you ask for an artist slash engraver? Do I have engravers? I do. Do any of these Dorfuses striketh your fancy? And also, I have to save. Uh, can I save after I name this dwarf Rye? Sweet. See, that's not difficult. Ride to Sudi Suki Suki. That's not difficult. That's just Dwarf Fortress. So you are confusing difficulty with the way the game works. That's not difficulty, right? Like, yeah, you'll have dwarves fly off the edges and drown. But if you are intending for them to fight over top of water, that is your choice, right? And also, if you're intending for them to fight over water, the logical thing to do would be to train them to swim. Right? And if you're fighting over water, that's a dumb decision made by the player. That's like saying Mario 64 is a very difficult game. Try repeatedly jumping off the edge and only running around with minimum life. No, you're intentionally making the game much harder for yourself. Mario 64 is not that hard. Right? Like, yeah, okay. I mean, if you are always running around on minimum HP and refusing to pick up health pickups, then yeah, of course. You say Adil? Okay, sweet. That's not arbitrary at all. You got the thing. El Banksy. So, no, I don't think anything in Dwarf Fortress is particularly difficult, but I'm very well documented saying this, so I'm a bad person to ask. I will say playing small map, like one tile maps are very annoying because I just, I don't like building in that way, but that's more of just, I don't like building that way. Um, did Cacophony... Cac Cacophony of Stupid is the holy crystal uh, of a religion. So El Banksy here uh, would flee even the most necessary battle to avoid any physical form of confrontation, which means he lives longer than most dwarves. Uh, he, te he works to square his natural tendency with his respective martial prowess. Uh, he actually avoid he actively avoids exciting or stressful situations and doesn't stick with things even if minor difficulties arise. Uh, he is often cheerful and he is trusting and he tries to get things done perfectly. He tends to make a mess with his own possessions and he finds helping others to be emotionally rewarding. He often acts with compassion and is conflicted by this since he values uh, since he uh, he often acts with compassion and he is conflicted by this since he sees these tendencies as an impotent for the quest for power. Uh, he likes to take it easy, tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions, is not particularly interested in what others think of him, generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity, and uh, when he's thinking, he has a tendency to chew on his cheek. He needs alcohol to get through the working day and doesn't, and is a hardened individual, meaning he's fine with stress generally. Uh, he personally sees, finds sacrifice as one of the highest ideals, respects development of a skill, uh, respect finds nature to be somewhat disturbing and does not care about friendship and dreams of creating a great work of art. Likes Stibnite, Aluminum, Zircon, Color Cardinal, Coffins, Bracelets, Goblets, and Ducks for their quacks. Mink Men for their long bodies and the and when possible prefers to consume asparagus, hard wheat beer, and giant one-humped camel's milk and absolutely hates lizards, man. Hates them. Can't stand lizards. He's got a developed sense of empathy and avoids excitement. Um, he has lots of friends and plenty of close friends, uh, which is very good. And uh, is a member of the Doctrine of Amethysts and worships the God of Mountains. Who he shares a name with. It's like a guy named Jesus being Christian. Um, okay, so let's go down to... Actually, let's just do this. There it is. Well, I mean, you could deal with combat because of your respect of martial prowess. You just generally choose not to. Okay, so now I'm going to save. What a hell of a way to start off the fort, jeez.
On your break, saw a bit of the siege while you were working. That was one hell of a siege, man. Usually when you uh, want to surface uh, magma, you pick a volcano or a place with no aquifers to make it easier. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. No, I, I think that, that, that siege is going to be a video. You guys are going to get that over the weekend. Although I've got a, a few things to do over the weekend. There was a pretty stealthy but very long Future of the Fortress post that was posted. Um, and so I need to do that over the weekend. I guess I, that video won't take me too long because um, editing highlights is... I've gotten pretty quick at those. Um, I've got to sort out all my VODs. I've got to start working on part two because I, before Adventure Mode is out, basically, I, I have until then. Oh, wow. We got that siege done quick enough that the Mountain Home was able to come trade. That is the most impressive thing about that whole thing. Is your dwarf still kicking? We've had very few casualties, so I assume so. Yes, you're still kicking. You're still re you're rendering fat right now. You're a little neutral. Not the happiest you've been, but getting by. Let's also um, take all of these dwarves off training, set them all to off duty, and give them a freaking break. Because my god, they've earned it. And actually, hold on, I'm just going to pop down here, jump over here, and just say, Guys, quit sleeping here and quit training here. Um, Sits, you are still alive and still working? Okay, still Chief Medical Dwarf, you're a little pissed right now. Um, I'm going to take you off of work for a little bit, and I'll check into why. But, uh... There is your situation. Statue of Bolski. What else do you think we should put into Bolski's tomb, chat? I was going to give... Um, actually, let, let's... Let, actually, never mind. I'm not taking suggestions. I'm going to take a slab for Bolski. Hopefully a nice one. And um, I'm going to jump into his tomb. And I'm going to put a pedestal, and I'm going to put his sword... Uh, Chat, should we put his hammer or his shield in his tomb? I had to be at work on Zoom for a bit. Uh, did you do good for the fort? Chat, do tell Potpourri how they did. Hammer? Hammer, 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 hammer. Okay, hammer. Sweet. Put his hammer then. Sorry, there's something kind of funny to me about the kid just, like, running out here. But, yeah, okay, sweet. His hammer's the ones that's still there. Bispeth Bronze Warhammer. Um, I wish I could nickname Warhammers still, because that would make this so much easier. Um... I'm going to forbid them all in Unforbid 1. And that's how I'm going to put it here. Um, but currently, I'm just going to re-forbid this one. So the only unforbidden Bismuth Bronze Warhammer is the one that goes into this tomb on this pedestal. Then we can trade. Can make it a noble symbol. It'll get a name. I'm going to make it the symbol of Baby Blue Ford, actually, because that's a good idea. And the reason I'm going to do that is because Baby Blue Ford was in the first squad that Bolski was a part of, and they trained together for their first year. Just have to find it now. Should be the first Bismuth Bronze Warhammer I see. One day we'll be able to search this menu. One day we'll be able to search this menu. And I can't wait for that day to come. <laughs> I 
Yeah, it is a shame. I mean, that, that dwarf hadn't been training with it for too, too long. My, my, one of my biggest annoyances with this version of the game, actually, um, is in older versions of the game, if you clicked on an item, any item, name or not, didn't matter, um, it would tell you how many kills that item had gotten and who wielded it. Which is really funny when you click on, like, a barrel and somehow it's killed three people. Um, there's something about that that's, like, special that I miss about older versions of the game. Um, but, uh, there's an ad break running, so. But, um, you don't get that with weapons anymore. You have to go into Legends mode to look at that, which I'm not a huge fan of. How are there socks that are worth more than this hammer? Thank you, Alfie. I don't know why I, what I did to deserve a statement of appreciation, but... You wish DF had cloud saves? The problem is, is Steam does actually have a limit for cloud save size. And uh, Dwarf Fortress saves are very capable of going bigger than that. So it, there is a world where we could have cloud saves, but it would be limited to, like, small worlds. Because, like... um there would have to be some limitations on it because I have, um, like those worlds that I generated during the last Zack and Tarn interviews are like uncompressed. They're like 30 gigs for those two saves. Uh, you, you would put the shield in the tomb, let the hammer be wielded in honor to impact their vengeance and foes. Um, unfortunately the shield has already been hauled and I don't know where it ended up. So... That would actually be harder to find now, so I'm just going to go with the hammer. But I, I appreciate the input. Okay, I'm starting to get into Bismuth Bronze. I think we're about in the right value range now. There we go. Found it. I didn't give it a name. What are you talking about? Oh, man, that was the wrong one. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Well, hmm. <laughs> Awkward. Can't undo that now. But let's go try and do another one. Did I just click on, or I just clicked out of it? Watching your streams has gotten you through the past year. Happy to help, dude. It's gotten me through many years. <laughs> Streaming, that is. Not watching my streams. This the right one? Nope. Makes me sad that forbidding them doesn't actually work for this. There's only four in the fort, so...
This is a good idea, though. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is one of the fiddliest... Like, this menu is great. Totally fine if you're trying to find one of the most valuable items in the fort. If you're trying to find... Any... There we go. Okay, so... Gonna go back in here. Um, and unassign these three. Rursaril, this thing. R-U-R-Seril. Um is the one that's going to go on there. Ay ay ay. Right there. Oh, you're probably re you were probably replying to me like repeatedly putting the wrong one there, right? <laughs> if I had to bet Do I not have any slabs? Oh. Apparently, I uh, don't have any slabs. Well, I thought I had slabs, so. So I guess I can't make a slab. Let's uh, make a new slab then. What material do I make it out of? You know what? Let's make it out of cinnabar. Because <laughs> cinnabar is a fun material, it's bright red. Ranger Rick, what up? You just missed the coolest fight I've had in a minute. Hopefully finish the entrance as the DF mission for the day. Yeah. Um, in fact, I'm going to... Because I'm keeping the dwarves in the burrow for right now because the outside is spooky. Um, we're just going to set this as part of the burrow for right now so that the dwarves can work on all this. We're going to go into here and unforbid all of this stuff. And I'm going to start working on these on the ceiling as well, which is going to be the one of the more time-consuming chunks of this, shall we say? And actually, did I add this all the way across? No, I didn't. And then I'm going to jump up to here. And we are going to start building a really large floor. That's a door, not a floor. All right. That is weird. Laya, that, that is very strange. What are you, are you working on something? Shoutouts to Stinthad. So Stinthad is, this is very fitting. Stinthad is one of the original seven starting dwarves. Um, and Stinthad is the one putting this item on display. That is very fitting. I gotta say. Statues and display cases, not display cases, uh, pedestals. No idea where it came from. That is weird. I uh, found a weird thing of goo in my in my apartment recently in my um, in my utensils drawer. But very quickly, I solved the mystery when I picked it up and gave it a sniff. Weed butter. <laughs> so, I I mean, you know, <laughs> we all get weird goo from different places. This dwarf is getting a fancy tomb because of how heroic they were in the fight. 
the final fight. If anything. Also, um, for those of you who are subscribed to the Twitch channel, we do have a new emote, courtesy of Elfie Bean, called Mic Drop. It's what it's a falling microphone. So if you ever want to just do a mic drop. You can do a mic drop. It's raining Mike's. Hallelujah. You know, maybe all of the men are named Mike. So we are working on the entrance once again, getting all of these things done. We're also working on this and also now also working on this. So this is going to be hopefully not the slowest build I've ever done, but you know, <laughs> it may take a bit. Uh, it's a lot of construction needs to be done. Mike, 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 Mike. Guess what day it is? Hump day. Hump day? I was gonna say I'm pretty sure it's Friday. Isn't Hump Day the middle of the week? Uh oh. We've got a dwarf brawling under the influence. I'm sure that's good. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, also something I should point out for those of you who don't know um, is my tavern has a prison built into it. <laughs> Shout out to the prisoners who get imprisoned on the chains that are on top of the booze stockpile. Actually, I should just make the whole prison into a booze stockpile. It's great because they go to jail and then they hang out and make a bunch of friends. <laughs> We also just got um, uh, some uh, crimes against Kashmir, who apparently committed some sort of crime um, of uh, disorderly conduct. So, um, should probably deal with that. Probably about to get a bunch more too. Ah, okay. I have not seen that commercial. One of your my my older sister ran a uh, D and D campaign a couple of years ago, uh, using a generated dwarf fortress world and uh, took some ideas from legends, which I think is really neat. Someone in uh, YouTube chat is talking about um, using DF as a D and D tool. <laughs> Cleans patient, now goes to beat criminal. You know, the duality of this dwarf. Helps somebody, feels empathy, and then goes and kicks the shit out of somebody. <laughs> okay, so something I'm noticing is a lot of dwarves really, really, really want to um, worship a god. I'm going to open up the Anything Goes Temple again because um, even though it was stopping dwarves from hanging out in the tavern and the other temples... I think we should open up the Anything Goes Temple again, just purely for the statement of allowing dwarves to, you know, worship whatever god, and it they seem to use that more. All right, let's do some trading. At least the stuff that we can reach, because I'm not letting the dwarves outside until all those bodies are rotten. Another thing I need to show you guys is the gift shop. It's possibly my favorite part of this fortress right now this is the gift shop right here although where's the minecart um i don't actually know we'll throw a different minecart into it um the way the mine the way the gift shop works is pretty simple um items go from this stockpile into the minecart okay which gives the dwarves a chance to claim it. They go into the minecart, and then every 15 days, regardless of how much is in it, it's pushed over here. 
Those items are then unloaded into this workshop. This workshop is hooked up with this workshop that is perpetually encrusting um, raw cut glass into gems um, and then encrusting uh, the, 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 the finished goods uh, with them, these, these things. Um, these finished goods, fi finished goods are then um, put back into this stockpile. So this stockpile is a give stockpile. This stockpile is a take stockpile. This is just a pile of shit that doesn't get moved into this stockpile in time. And this is an infinite loop minecart. So every single time a dwarf picks this up to go put an item in it, they have a chance to craft it. They have a, t a chance to keep it. Every time it's picked up from here to move to here or into here, uh, they have a chance to keep it. Every time it's put into the minecart, they have a chance to keep it. And every time it's unloaded from the minecart, they have a chance to keep it and it just loops. So the idea is that dwarves are claiming items more frequently. And in my experience, just having a glance, they, they seem to be quite a bit. Um, also, I need some new clothes, so I'm actually gonna screenshot this dwarf's um, clothing, and I'm going to queue up a bunch of new clothing from the screenshot just to make my life a little bit easier. But yeah, I'm, I'm real happy with the gift shop. It's, a, it's a, an idea that I sort of had, but also chat helped prototype the idea, and we put it together as a team. Bonus stream, yes. It will be shorter than the than the recent streams, but um, let's check cloth. Ah, I have a lot of cave spider silk. So I'm just gonna do most of this out of silk. We're just gonna do everything out of silk, actually. Uh, silk loincloth. Silk browsers. Silk dress, and I know that some of them have robes and shirts. Silk robe. Silk shirt. Silk glove. Silk, oops, slock. Silk shoe. Uh, it's a gift shop. If I were to make one for clothing, that would be a thrift shop. Um, silk wood. And I'm also, just for tradition, yarn boot. Yarn shoe. But I don't actually have enough yarn to make one for everybody, so we're just going to do 50 yarn. Uh, and then we'll say 200 hoods, uh, 150 silk shoes, 200... 200. I know this is making way too many, but I have the materials, so might as well. Make uh, 200 robes, 200 dresses, 200 trousers, 200 loincloths. That's an opportunity also to just get a bunch of good trade goods. I want to I wanna make boots with the fur, man. That's it. Oh, I know why the minecart wasn't on the track. <laughs> because this dwarf stole it to encrust it with gems. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to put the other minecart back. That's fine. <laughs> they, were, they were blinging up the gift shop minecart, okay? That's, that's what was happening. They were blinging up the gift shop minecart. It's now encrusted with gems. I, that, you know, that's, that's fine. That's totally fine. That was your dwarf, yeah, because your dwarf's a gem cutter. <laughs> My wagon. <laughs> yes. Act exactly. Dwarf just doing their job? I mean, I, I'm, I'm always amazed the dwarves have the ability to just, like, remove a minecart from a minecart track and do shit to it, but, like, you know, I guess it's very, it's dwarfy, right? right? I will buy the raw clear glass. Eh, I'll buy the ropes, why not? I'm gonna buy whatever the gatal is. It's an instrument. 
I don't actually have that much. Oh, I, sorry. I don't actually have that much. Only 11,000 bucks. I mean, most of that is these amulets. Um, ooh, I'm gonna buy these high boots, actually. Buy the meats, buy the fish. Don't need the plump helmets. Buy these, buy these, buy those. Eh, 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 nah. Buy the cheese, buy this, buy them. And I'll buy the pepper as well. Paper. Don't care about the extra last item that's taking forever. Read, is it the monastery? That's what I was reading. The sect of grieving. Does the trader cart come from the cavern floor or the surface? They they can leave through the caverns, but they cannot come through the caverns. They wouldn't be able to enter this one anyway, because all the side, the, all the walls are sealed off. So no, they do not come through the caverns. Um, that would be cool though. Okay, um, I need to build more housing. So I kind of don't like the way this area looks because it's so dirty. But I'm going to go over to this area where all of the actually we're gonna do a thing. Bonk. This might coax the elves into attacking me, but it's fine. Um, I'm going to go into here, and we're going to build some more houses. Little dwarf houses in, in the rocks. The wagons do take the amount of tr tr travel time to the mountain home to arrive, but... No, and if you want them to go down into caverns to trade with you in a cavern fort like this, um, you do need to make ramps all the way down into the fort. Okay, let's do this. Hmm. I'm actually gonna make a little tunnel, I think. Walk over to here. I'm just gonna get some patio action going on here. You know, I think that there's two ways that you can think about housing in Dwarf Fortress. And I think it, for me, very much changes the way that I build, depending on how I think about it. If I think about them as rooms, <clears throat> I don't put that much effort in. If I think of them as condos or homes, I put a lot more effort in and try and make them more unique. Because like, as somebody who lives somewhere, like most people do, um, I, I think that there's a pretty big difference between, like, group housing and a home. I like to make them feel like homes. Little houses in the hillside. Yeah, you know, it's it's like it's like the difference between like a hostel and hobbit holes. You know. figure out how to build keyboard keys for a musical instrument. Musical instruments can be a pain. There's, so there's this lady um, who one of my neighbors is texting me about right now who sits outside, smokes a cigarette, and talks on voice, like a voice call. It's usually one or two male voices that, I, that we can hear her talking to. Um, 
Not sure what language she speaks. My neighbor says she sounds Persian, but I'm not sure. Um, and she just sits there and fucking cries her goddamn eyes out. Earth has test prints out on Bandcamp. How much are they? And which album? Just drop the thing. Bees made honey. First print, 200 bucks each. I don't have that kind of money, man. There's one remaining? Oh, shit. Wait, what is it? 271 Canadian dollars. That is one of my favorite records of all time. Earth made abandoned didn't invite you. There is Seattle like indie band. Could be considered apple bottom jeans. Yeah, we've been we've been joking about that a lot. <laughs> That's where the whole name came from to begin with. Fetal position in bed till you feel better. Feel better soon, Creed. Feel better soon. That sucks, man. tend to build apartments, but you place them in an area near where the dweller does most of their work. Yeah, I don't really worry about that because jobs for dwarves in my forts change pretty frequently. Like, because I don't have strict job assignments almost ever, um, they shift from job to job. So that doesn't really make sense. And dwarves, you know, they don't sleep that often. And it's not that big of a deal for them to walk halfway across the map because they move pretty quickly. So unless they're like a noble of sorts. Two more brawling under the influence claims. The pain is too much. Toasted the fishery worker was found dead. Ah. Well, you did just get caught brawling under the influence, right? Oh, maybe Dodok killed you? Ah. So Dodok was brawling under the influence and Tosid, the fishery worker, was found dead. Fortunately, they, you know, were kind enough to uh, kill a worker who doesn't matter in this fortress. The dwarves seem to understand what's up in this regard. I realize how brutal that sounds, good lord. Also, for full clarity's sake, I'm not sure why all of these weapons ended up in here. But on top of this one hammer, we also got some greaves, a helm, and a steel shield. So I can tell you for a fact that that dwarf who died was not wielding those, but we're going to call them a donation from the military. Can't stop, won't stop. Ranger Rick, thanks for the 13th month. Welcome back, mate. Chatroom, can I get a round of beers for Ranger Rick? Keeping that subscription alive. <laughs> Those, the fishery workers need to rise up and form from a union. I have no fishery workers in this fort. True story. Uh, 
I am going to build a ramp out of the nearest material and build a circle of obsidian around this gravesite. Oh, I don't bust unions. If they want to form a union, they can. The thing is, the way dwarves in Dwarf Fortress form unions is they need 10 people to be employed with the same job. I am not going to employ any dwarf as fishery dwarves. Ever. Uh, so because of this, we just won't get one in the first place. I'm just informing my neighbor I'm going to be slow to respond until 4. I also had to give this same neighbor the explanation of, please don't text me on your, like, iMessage app because, my God, it's a nightmare. So, yeah, basically, I'll say this. If uh, somebody wants to give me 150 bucks, I will buy this Bees Made Honey in the Lion's Skull Test Press record. So if somebody wants me to race, waste $171.70 of my money uh, <laughs> on a record... Uh, you can do that by giving me $150. But that's it's fine. Fishing only for it when? I've done it. I just... Fishing's too easy, man. You get way too much materials from it. Like, way too many materials. Way, 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 way too many materials. I don't know I missed if I missed in the ad break, but why do I not do any fishing? Um, there's two reasons. One, it is the most dangerous job for a dwarf to do. This was best uh, explained once in an older VOD that I had where uh, I had a, uh, a viewer ask for a dwarf and they wanted to be a fishery dwarf. And I said, okay, but you'll probably die. And they said, that's fine. So I named them a fishery dwarf, read the dwarf's description, and then followed the dwarf for a minute. They literally walked outside, started fishing. A giant tick jumped out of a tree, killed the dwarf, dragged the dwarf's corpse up into the tree, and then went back into stealth. <laughs> um, so that's one of the reasons. The other reason is uh, fishing is just very, 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 very easy. Um, like to the point where uh, a one legendary fisher dwarf could probably feed this whole fort. <laughs> And I like I'd rather farm. Um, and I don't really use fishing stuff as crafting materials. So kind of the combination of I don't really use fishing stuff as crafting materials, like shells. I I, I don't really use um, I, I I don't really use uh any any like basically any fishing stuff as crafting materials. Um, so basically between that. And, um, you know, yeah, I, I don't use the, the crafting materials because it's, it's generally too low value. I'd rather just use bones. Um, and it just being generally very, 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 very overpowered makes it, you know, very easy for me to just be like, eh. So I'm going to let the dwarves build up to here and then I'm going to actually pause this construction because building this many floors is exhausting and I'm seeing some tired dwarves and I don't want the moods to tank and they already are. So, we need these dwarves to take another break. Because this fort could topple pretty quickly if I uh, let the moods tank. I'm going to let them take a break doing that. And we are going to go over here and make more bedrooms. Granted, it is. But I'm going to do this in the quicker, cheaper way just to get dwarves' bedrooms, because there's still many dwarves without bedrooms in this fort. What is this massive construction? My front door! It's going to partially drain the lake, um, and 
in the process of partially draining the lake, it's going to allow enemy armies to walk into the fortress at the bottom of the lake and allow fights to take place in the trench leading into the lake so that if it's a living army, I can just let them walk into the lake and then drown. And if it's a unliving army, I can just uh, let them walk into the lake and fight them underwater to look really badass and also pretend to be a biblical figure while I'm at it. I don't know. It's just a cool front door. <laughs> Very over-designed. Well, it's not that... It's not... It's, like, really, realistically, fishing isn't that dangerous. But early game and mid game, fisher dwarves are the first dwarves to get infected by were creatures, and they are the first dwarves to die to any kind of agitated wildlife. And there's kind of a old... Like, this, this is a pretty old head dwarf fortress thing. But um, there's an old joke that, like, the most dangerous job you can do as a dwarf is fish. And the most stressful job you can do as a dwarf is fish. Because you're going to see the most dead bodies. Because you're going to be going outside after fights. You are going to um, encounter uh, the things that can kill you first. And you are going to uh, be in the rain the most. So you are going to be the most stressed out because you're going to be in the rain the most. And you're... Okay, I just need another 100 bucks to waste 170 bucks. Want to learn more? Thanks for the 50 bucks, mate. It means a lot, dude. Although realistically, if I do buy that test record, it's getting framed and never played. Do I know something about danger, room or danger rooms? Uh, they haven't really worked since version 34, which is like from 2012 to 2014. Uh, do not make them. They will kill your dwarves. They're great. Unless you really, really, really want to train um, doctors. It's one of those things that was a very effective strategy over 10 years ago and hasn't really been effective since. Uh, you should not build danger rooms. I recommend against building danger rooms. People keep asking about them because they Google Dwarf Fortress strategies and they find things from like 10 years ago. Um, basically, uh, the game used to be a lot slower and it used to take a lot longer to train your dwarves to do literally anything. This this is every single skill. This isn't just combat. This is every single skill. And because everything took a lot longer, people figured out ways of speeding up trading. And um, Danger Rooms was a way of speeding up training uh, in the older versions of the game. But because they've changed how stress works, how combat works, and how training works, it is much more time efficient to just give your dwarves sharp weapons and tell them to train. The reason people use danger rooms is using training weapons took way longer, which was the only way to safe way to train originally. Um, training weapons were non-lethal and the only way to train non-lethally. However, now two things happen with weapons. One, they get attached to the weapon that they use the most and get sad if you don't let them use it. So if you get them to train with a training weapon, they will get attached to it likely and then get sad if you make them stop using it. The second thing that was changed was um, all training went from being potentially lethal to being non-lethal, right? Because it, sparring used to be violent and they used to try to kill each other. Tarn made sparring non-violent, making it more time effective and more logical to literally just tell your dwarves to train in a barracks. Do not build danger rooms unless you're trying to train your doctors. It's a waste of time. We'll keep fishing during siege. Well, that's because fishers do not care about their lives and hate their jobs. So you as a good dwarf fortress overseer should not employ fisher dwarves in a dangerous place. If you do actually want to fish, my recommendation is to build a fishing hut. Uh, connect a little enclosed room uh, that is protected uh, to the water supply you want them to fish in. And then tell your dwarves to stay in that room when they're fishing. Uh, go into the advanced orders and tell them to stay in that area. And um, then let them train. Chat room. Okay, Hi, I'm going to gift a sub. Cacophony of Stupid here. Have a know? subscription for a month. Know. This is me. I'm doing it anonymously. That's all I can do, but we just need two more people to cheer $1 to get a hype train. Come on, let the man have a hype train. 
It's the most I can do. Thank you. For the second $50 tip. It means a lot, man. Seriously. Draken Soul uh, gifted a subscription and RPG Vandetta cheered a dollar. Thank you so much, man. There you go, baby. You almost died in the last siege, by the way. I'm really curious to see what level that's going to be at. There you go. I have a feeling Suited Giraffe really wants me to waste <laughs> uh, $170 of my money. Sweet Skuma! I like your username. Thank you very much for gift, uh, for, um, well, actually, got, got gifted a subscription. Oh, actually, no, sorry, you're paying, you're paying a subscription for it. Thank, Sweet Skuma, thank you very much for paying that subscription forward and, uh, gifting a subscription. Appreciate you. That is a great username. It's one of my favorite, like, random tidbits of Elder Scrolls BS. It's just, <laughs> it is just Skuma. Thanks for the dollar, Chad. Appreciate you, mate. El Duda Reno as well. Thanks for the five bucks. That was my first fort. My first fort? Uh, I played for not about five minutes, got mad at it, couldn't figure out how to exit, couldn't figure out how to save, and uh, alt f would the game and went back to playing League of Legends and didn't think about the game for a few years. <laughs> or not a not few years, about six months. That, that was my first fort. So do I have any cool stories from my first fort? No. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Ryan Katsu, thanks for the 10 bucks. Here. Ryan Katsu, ha have have a subscription. Appreciate the dwarfs during the day. Thank you. The ten bucks. Bell and Arthur, you got here just in time, so shit's going crazy. Um. Although I got sad news. That uh, pressing sold out. So, wait, actually, hold on, did it? Okay, nope, never mind, it didn't. I, I was looking at the wrong page. It says it's not sold out, maybe, maybe it did. Yeah, I think it sold out. They only made five, so. Did the other one sell out? Because they have another test pressing. There's one remaining for one of their other albums, which is Angels of Darkness, which is also a great album. Hmm. Unless I'm misreading something. No, I don't think I'm misreading it. Devil on, thank you very much for the five pack. Holy shit. <clears throat> Better band camp is just fucking with me, which is possible. Yeah, B's sold out. Um. Hmm. What do you think, Giraffe? Since you're committing to this bit so heavily, should I buy the Angels of Darkness, Demons of Light, part one? I do really like that record. For that test pressing. I mean, since they're making test pressings, they'll do a full run. 4% short. Damn, you were so close. Hold on. Hello, you keep. How are you? If I like it, go for it. I just like Earth a whole lot. I could also just, like, buy some normal pressings of cheaper stuff if they have any. Because you're committing to this bit real hard. I have Primitive and de Deadly. By Earth 2. And Earth 2.23. Naturally. I think I will pass on those test pressings, but just because... Um, Our friend here has committed so heavily to this bit.
really annoying they only made five of those. I can't get over how expensive it is to, um... Oh, really? They were only selling one? Okay. I didn't even see the uh, the email. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, hold on, let me check something. But chat room, thank you very much for the absurd generosity. Like, it really does mean a lot. Oh, here, I know what I'm going to do instead, actually. Because we were talking about this earlier. Um, instead of me buying that earth test pressing, I'm going to buy the two uh, dope throne represses on record. Ooh. Because that's kind of what this is, is I basically challenged chat earlier, hey, if you guys waste a bunch of money, I will buy this thing. Um, so instead of buying the Earth stuff, uh, I'm going to get Trans-Canadian Anger on Silver Vinyl and Demon Smoke on Black Vinyl. And also, um, I can't pronounce this. So, that. And, uh, this is gonna cost way too much money, but that was, that was the, that was the deal. You guys, you give me money, I will spend way too much money. And, um, we will do a record stream on the, uh, second channel to stream all of this shit. Sound good? I'm not gonna do it on 420, because it won't be here by then, but... Thanks for your stupidity and generosity, Suited. And chat room in general. You guys are very kind. Because Dope Throne is fantastic. All right, now that we've done that and I've spent way too much money, um, and unlike uh, those test pressings, I would actually play these. I, I would just frame a test pressing. I, I would never play a test pressing. Um, but, uh, I will actually play those. So these are all going to become bedrooms for the dwarves. And chat has a crazy hype train going on right now. We're up to level six, which means if you cheer a dollar or resubscribe or gift a subscription right now, you'll get an emote. Probably a pretty cool one that you may or may not have already. It's okay to ask. Uh, of, of the albums? Uh, the three albums that I just bought. You know it's a good indie band when they when you get the names uh, of the person who uploaded the album when you send them a, a, a payment for it. Trans-Canadian Anger, Demon Smoke, and Hocha Heliga. Yeah, that. Um, from the band Dope Throne. Uh, Big Bang, thanks for gifting a subscription, and Iyer Stupid, thanks for the dollar. You guys are very kind. All right, well, that was way too much money I just spent. <laughs> but hey. You are correct. Three different Earth... I see the email now, because it came in while I was streaming. Three different Earth test pressings now available via Van Camp, test pressing four. I think they've been slowly popping them out. Yeah, they, they've been they they they've they've done other test pressings before, um, but yeah, and they, they sold five of each I think based on the description of that. And also, I have a bunch of strata emails to look at. Whatever, I'm just gonna close. Work shit. Okay, um, where was I? All these floors are done. Let's just get doors done. Or is all the way around here. 
Let's go plop in a bunch of beds. Oh, I need beds. Hm, so many items getting... Whoa! $4.20 from Sims. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Offsetting some of that spent money. I... Every now and again, dumb expenses pop up that are completely pointless and not needed. Um... And I challenge chat, and here we go. And that's how my record collection grows. But thank you very much. It means a lot. Ollie, thanks for the dollar. Appreciate you, man. Adventure mode's gonna be fun, I think. Couple beds start piling in. Let's see if I have any chests and stuff that I can throw in here. Oh, that's a door I missed. The current lag that the fortress is hitting will subside. I will keep a passive eye on that artifact as it gets made. Four hours of writing by followed by four, four hours of DF is a full day. That's an eight-hour shift, man. It's a full day at work. I hope that your writing was good. Sorry for being, like, so distracted when you got here because, like, it's been busy, but I hope that your stream went well. Um, I hope that you are having a good afternoon, and I, I hope that the writing was good. I do have a lot on my plate right recently, but here's hoping I can get to reading your story on cassette at some point soon. Still waiting for adventure mode. You love DF, but you can't look after a f uh, you can't look after a Fort Worth anything. Oh, really? So like you just straight up haven't like played. You you've been waiting for adventure mode since this version came out. Well, that's impressive if that's the case. That is impressive, mate. I have a deer for some reason. And we're slaughtering a shit ton of yaks. Slowly. Well, that is a ver very much a hobby channel, Telenartho, that's probably never going to be monetized fully. So, um, you know, I kind of am expecting that. Okay, so who's the most pissed off dwarf in the fort right now? It's UGDPY again. Yeah, this, this dwarf should stay out of the military for a while, I think. But you do really want to acquire an object. That's the one real concern I have about this dwarf, so I'm actually going to boot you from being a performer for a wee bit and tell you to just go do other jobs. Bored after watching a performance crouch. It's like, you still have the same beer? Gonna go make a silk shirt. Hopefully that's an opportunity to do some of that. Forgotten Beast Ab has come. A uh, quadruped composed of ash. It has mandibles and a bloated body. Uh, you would like a dwarf magpie. What kind of dwarf? You could, uh, could I have that one super pissed dwarf? I think, cause, no, because they are already named. But I can give you another pissed dwarf. The, the thing is, like, angry dwarves are not actually that common in this world. Soxul, um, the diagnoser, is pretty upset. Uh, we also have Dusim and Rakust are the lowest down ones. Who would you like? <laughs> Missed the redeem window again. Hey, chat. Are there any tier two or tier three subscribers around here that wants to uh, nominate Bone Doll for a dwarf? I think that's just what I'm going to start doing now is when people comment that they missed it. Call it out and see if somebody does it. But uh, which one would you prefer? Either or? Okay, so uh, we'll give you Soxel, because he's higher up. Technically, slightly more stressed, probably. Um, Mag Pie. There you go. Dorf, whoever it was. Uh, Bone Dolphin. <laughs> uh, chat room. Yay or nay, does Bone Dolphin get a dwarf? And then just chat amongst yourselves and let me know uh, what kind of dwarf, if it's accepted. 
Uh, does not generally seek retribution for past wrongs. Seek lives a high energy kinetic pace, is quick to anger, and takes offered helping gifts without feeling particularly grateful. Uh, he tends to be a little tight with resources when working on projects, a little interest in joking around, is very humble and not particularly interested in what others think of him. Doesn't cling tightly to ideas, is open to changing his mind, and mutters under his breath when he's annoyed. He commonly winks as a form of greeting and needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of mastering a skill, personally. Values a harmonious existence, sees merrymaking as a waste, and values artwork and respects power and believes it is important to conceal from emotions and refrain from complaining. And, uh, like, Gypsum, lay pewter, and blue jade, oak wood, giant puff and leather, snail shell, guinea fowls for their social nature, and uh, the sound of the beige lute, and the sight of the sienna glimmer, and when possible, prefers to consume barn owl or guava wine. All right, uh, Bone Doll, beard or no beard? That's my only question to you. The rest goes is up to chat. Interested, after being near many fine pieces of furniture, wants martial training and wants to acquire an object, and is currently going to go diagnose a patient. Um, and uh, has no kills? Debatable. I mean, you're a doctor that could potentially have kills. Um, and has a long beard, sideburns, has several friends, and is a member of the Mountainous Fellowship, which is a god that worships the god of mountains. Welcome to the fortress, Magpie. There's a bone daughter, doctor, doctor of some sort, entertainer, or jerk. Uh, bone. I've got Zaphon or Zulban. Not to be confused with, confused with Bonesaw, who's very happy because he's walking around saying, eyes wide open. Or arms wide open, not eyes wide open. Blah, blah, blah. Other thing. Close. But no cigar. Sold? Is that, oh, you said troublemaker, so I'll give you the slightly less happy one. Um, Bone Doll is <clears throat> Zephon Brass Rhyme. What does Brass Rhyme with, chat? Uh, is frequently depressed. <laughs> Is easily moved to mercy and is a pessimist. Isn't particularly ambitious, can easily fall in love and develop positive feelings, and that's probably the cause of his depression. Uh, he takes offered help and gifts without feeling particularly grateful, is a friendly individual, uh, generally is quite confident in his abilities when undertaking specific ventures, and often feels lustful. Uh, occasionally overindulges, talks very quickly when he's angry, and blows out his breath when he's annoyed and gets distracted from conversations easily when he's angry. Needs alcohol to get through the working day and does not mind being outdoors at least for a time and doesn't really care about anything anymore more. Dreams of creating a great work of art, personally views uh, uh, the pursuit of knowledge as deeply important and values peace over war, values romance, finds maintaining a decorum a silly and fumbling waste of time, and doesn't feel strongly about the law and doesn't really see the point of working hard. Uh, likes sulvite, uh, bronze and purple spinel, uh, crystal glass crossbows and cages, and the words of the knowing silk and the sound of the beige lute, and uh, the sight of the carmine cistern, when possible, prefers to consume mango wine and cherries and absolutely hates flies. Welcome to the fort. You want to fight, be with family, and make romance. Crass sass? What? He talks very quietly when he's angry. He blows out his breath when he's uh, annoyed and uh, gets distracted from conversation he's easily when he's angry, when he's attending a meeting. He'll self, self pity after being unable to fight. Hmm. I like how he's merciful but wants to fight. I think I'm going to grab one of my random militia com captains and do. One with Bone Doll, and then just random dwarves with no skills in fighting. We're just going to do some wrestling for a little bit. They're going to just go train here. Don't put actually any other stuff in here. And, um... Ice the Black Cat, thank you very much for the raid. How was your stream? Chat room, can I get a round of beers for the raider? Please do not drown him. We need them to live to tell us how their stream was. Um. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Rock armor stand. How was the stream? What were you up to? What, what were you playing? Mods, can I get a shout out for uh, Ice the Black Cat? Make you out of couple tight.
Okay, um, let's go into here and place some traction benches. Okay, don't have any traction benches. Those tables start getting made? Yeah, well, they did make the tables. Oh, I got tons of tons of tables, I think. Yeah, I do. Playing Game Boy Advance. What were you playing on Game Boy Advance? What brings you by uh, the realms of Dorfus? Fortress is very busy fortress. Let me tell you that. Uh, we got a dwarf that began a mysterious construction, which is good because I was paying zero attention to it. Um, I am in an ad break, and I'm going to use this as an opportunity to top off the last of my coffee. I will be back in about forty seconds. How do you do that, you dwarves use armor stands? So you have to have very limited stockpiles because dwarves will um, take weapons and armor off of uh, off of armor stands and put them in stockpiles. So usually what I do is I just make sure that my weapons and other stockpiles are different material than the main material that my dwarves are using for military. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, I will check on that artifact in a second, but... Um, the way you do it is the dwarves that are assigned to the area to that you want uh, set or turn turn these options on rather um, toggle whether or not soldiers will store their individually assigned weapons and armor here and uh, toggle whether or not squad level equipment such as ammunition is stored here ammunition and squad level equipment like backpacks and flasks go into the chest uh, sometimes depending on what the weapon is they go into the weapon racks although I see that happen very infrequently usually what they do is they put the armor onto the armor stands and then just drop the weapon on top of the armor stand and don't use the weapon racks I'm not sure why that is I think that's actually a bug but to me it doesn't really matter all that much so limited limit your stockpile supply um, stockpile availability and um, then they will just do that assuming there is enough weapon racks yeah so that, that that would be why i mean if i tell them to update their equipment um then then they will um what's the word uh go go if i tell them to update their equipment they'll do that oh yeah also when dwarves aren't training untoggle the train icon in here uh, otherwise they will just go back there automatically and like um, re-equip and drop and weird stuff like that but um you return from lunches, welcome back. And chat room, I just, I uh, genuinely, I have to say thank you so much for all, all of the hype trains this week. Like it, you guys, um, it, I, last month was the, uh, the the slowest month of the year so far. And uh, the, last, the way last year worked was uh, basically from that month going forward, uh, stuff just got very, 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 very quiet um, around here for a couple of months and it's nice to see the, the quietness not really happening in the same way this year, so I, it means a lot. So, thank you. Obviously, that's partially due to, you know, adventure mode, but it's it's nice. So, thanks, Chad. And I know that some people are like, but blind, uh, it's, it, you're, 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 your chat gets quiet because you can be a dick sometimes. I know that, but the reason chat actually gets quiet isn't because I'm a dick sometimes. Um, those people generally just stop watching, and it, that's my fault, and I need to be better. But uh, the, the reason uh, chat gets quiet is because my audience is made up of adults that have kids in a lot of cases, and vacation time, and real jobs. Uh, so that means that... Uh, 
when summer happens, people don't watch me as much because, yo, it's summertime. Go the fuck outside. Um, I'm a little bit worried about doing that automatically because I'm actually going to do it real quick, 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 quick save. Was that self-hate? Nope, that was uh, an admittance of guilt. Long ad? Ah, oh, jeez. You're playing uh, Shining Soul 2. Gotcha. Major game from uh, your childhood. Well, cheers. Were you, were you playing on actual hardware or um, like emulator? Or like, uh, like, a, like a Mr. type device or a FPGA thing? I'm seeing if I can like just feel find my thing. Okay, it's Ah, there it is. Found it. Let's see. Do you still have charge? I haven't turned you on in a while. Eh. There we go. Still has charge. Guess what I was playing last? I mean, bit of a giveaway. I mean, <laughs> uh, I last played that, um, or played a like I don't know the first half of the one of the campaigns. Um, when the remasters of those was, were announced, so, and I'm, I know it'll never happen, but jeez, could I just please put those on PC? I do not want to buy a fucking Switch, man. I just don't. Nintendo, be cool. Put Advance Wars on PC. You don't give a shit about it anyway. <laughs> never gonna happen. I know, but like, I can dream. <laughs> it's like wishing for unicorns, but more unrealistic. Yeah, you're right. I know. Like I said, though, I can dream. Okay, so now I can go around and assign these manually. The reason I'm assigning these dwarves manually is because it gives me a very clear picture of how many more bedrooms I need to make. It's very inefficient and you do not need to do this, but I do it because it helps my brain get the image quicker while I'm actively building bedrooms like this. But we are pretty close and then we can turn the population cap up. So chat, we were talking yesterday about turning the population cap up. So what number do I turn it up to? Four twenty? Oh my god! Bunch of fucking memers. Uh, rock coffin. No, no coffer, not coffin. Uh, let's just do two hundred because of your friggin' demands. Uh, ooh, I don't have two hundred of anything. Hmm. Hey, animal, how are you? I'm going to just tell them to make them out of quartzite. At 4.20 a.m., a man was spotted on a bench in a nearby theme park. Passersby said they don't care about him. They only care about square balloons and oversized Mexican hats, because that is what the world has come to. I'm bored. That's all I have for today. Twitch.tv slash Glenn Durrell. Twitch.tv oh boy. slash Glenn Durrell. Thanks for the dollar Twitch animal. Twitch.tv slash Glenn Durrell. Twitch.tv slash Glenn Durrell. Twitch. I hope you guys TV like this beat because it's going to stick around for a little bit. Twitch.tv slash Glendurl. Twitch Apparently I have iron TV ore. What? Thank you, animal. Appreciate you. I don't know where I got this iron ore from, but I have it, so. What other things do I have? Um, I can make billin, but I'm not going to. So let's dig around and find some quartzite. It's down here. I 
Uh oh. They're not going to actually dig all this out, but they will go this way quite far. Just got home from work. Well, congratulations on surviving another day at work. I hear it's a hellish place. I, I hope that uh, it wasn't too stressful this time. This mythical thing that many people must take part in in order to continue their existence. Work. Bloodborne and Demon Souls would be so cool. Hey, Sony is coming to their senses when it comes to um, putting games on other things. The F on a Game Boy, my god, that would be impressive. Do you imagine? Oh, you're doing restaurant work? I remember that you were working at the thrift shop. But, um... All right, Alfie, you should have it. I remember that you, I remember you working at the shift thrift shop. I don't remember you, uh... You switched this February. Oh, you may have mentioned it, but... My brain spaced it on that. Turns out, getting some dwarves sometimes to just punch each other, it's a real good way to just, like, sort the martial training need. Like this dwarf. So once they gain one skill in any of the martial skills, uh, it's it satisfies their need. And if they're able to spar with anybody, that satisfies their need to fight. Of course, you could also just tell them to go punch a wild animal, but, like... A little bit more dangerous. All right, let's um. Not do whatever material. And also another thing is I'm going to turn off all of the burrows and I'm gonna go up to here. Go to body parts, just set them to dump. Um, and corpses. There we go. That has most of their needs met. So, to quote Tarn Adams. Your Fortress is a game about attempting to simulate reality. In reality, some people are just kind of broken. Your Fortress is kind of the same. It will always be impossible to keep every single dwarf happy without cheating. It's one of my favorite parts of Dwarf Fortress, but I understand why it irritates some people. Because it's what kind of makes the game feel real to me and believable. So assuming these children's parents aren't dead and they aren't uh, aspiring future Batman, all of the adults have bedrooms. So chat room is insisting, insisting I set the population cap to 420. Well, I regret to inform you, chat, that I'm not going to set it to 420. I'm going to set it to 400. But! The strict population cap will be 420. Let's see if we can get to 400 first. They ask Eurist, and they go, Dwarf asks Eurist, yo, where, where's your bedroom? Oh, behind the tower cap trunk. <laughs> it's kind of in an alley, you know? It's not, it's not it ain't much, but you know, I, I, I've got a nice view of the yak fields. Great for an aspiring farmer, frankly.
<laughs> FPS of chat? I mean, here's the thing, right? My frame rate is great just for it. And I don't see this changing that too much. Like, genuinely, this fort kind of runs like butter. So, assuming that continues, I'm not worried at all about the frame rate. Although, you know, that could change. But yeah, the, the goals of this fort now are mostly population oriented. And cool constructions while fighting with, uh, and maybe destroying a necromancer tower. Especially after they murdered Olski. Those monsters. That is way too small, so. I will not do. Well, it reduces under 50 to 60. Here's the thing, Pep. And the thing that I always like to remind people when I do stuff like this. Before version 50 released, I had a fortress um, of 160 dwarves that was pretty well built frame rate wise that ran at an average frame rate of 15. Okay. When version 50 came out, the very first version that ran on Steam, which runs way worse than it does now, um, I had a average frame rate on a fortress of 200 shortly after release of about 25. When the first major frame rate increase patch came into the game, that fort went from 25 frames a second to 50. Um, if I run that fort now, I get flat 80. So, I think that that's perfectly acceptable that your game's lagging at, like, 300 plus dwarves. I think that is absolutely acceptable. In fact, I would be shocked if it wasn't running unacceptably terribly. We're getting more tantrums now. Dodok needs to be um, disciplined. Dwarf is not actively... Oh, is actively confined. This is unbearable, but at least is being in interested after getting to watch a bunch of performances. The one problem with having, like, you know, your, your prison in the tavern um, <laughs> is that they can continue, like, committing crimes. This dwarf's going to go unchain this peasant and then immediately retrain chain them because they just committed a bunch of crimes. So they chain them, beat them, Todini gets happy thought, Todini likes working in the hospital, so then immediately recovers the wounded, takes them to the hospital, um, and then turns around and is then going to take them to prison. Yeah, no, it's incredible how well the game runs. Can you nickname cats? Uh, if they Only if they've been given a name by an owner. Uh, exclamation point specs. We'll give you my specs. All right, so I'm actually going to remove this zone. I don't actually know what this dwarf needs. Oh, you, you got recently injured. That's why. I'm going to deconstruct you. This is going to suck. May actually permanently wreck this dwarf's health. Uh, Kodiak, thanks for gifting a subscription. Why is everybody being so fucking kind to me today? What's happening? I'm not complaining for clarity, but like, what? Cats don't, okay. Cats that own dwarves reveal their true name to the dwarves. And once they've had their true name revealed, then the player can give them a nickname if they so choose. 
Are you happy now? Got it. Supporting streamer less. <laughs> Thanks, Animal. Appreciate you. <laughs> um... This is going to be the Chief Medical Dwarf's quarters. And that's going to be the Chief Medical Dwarf's office. Although I made it into a meeting zone like a dummy. Get supported, nerd. Noted. Sits is currently digging. And has room right here, which I'm going to assign to this child named Rimtar. Um, Sits now gets this. Sits also is going to get this office, which is kind of a shitty office right now, but you know we'll, we'll make it better. Thanks for the additional, additional dollar on top of the other dollar that you just gave me, Animal. Okay, let's go all the way around. Go down to there. Way over to there. Uh, was that intended to be an all I can do? I mean, it's that's all I that's the most I would ask of anybody. Outside of the occasional, well, I mean, if you want me to spend too much money on records, <laughs> but that doesn't happen very often. Oops. Okay. I'm going to slaughter every single one of these water buffaloes. And in order to do this, I'm going to make, including the babies, because I, I do not want a water buffalo population. I've got yaks, that's more than enough. And I'm going to do this by making one, two, three, four, five butcher shops. And one, two, three, four, five tanner shops right there. That's interesting. I don't know why these aren't getting, oh, dumped, which is, I mean, these are all like feathers and shit. It's weird. I may just have way too many jobs, actually. Let's, let's check tasks. Ah, it's because everybody's smoothing walls, probably. Dumping stuff is pretty low priority here. Got four dwarves in hospital right now. And a shit ton of floors that need to be built. Okay. I'm gonna stop all those. Let's give them a break. Dumped where these dwarves are smoothing stuff. Uh, Dwarf Fortress hasn't been single core for like eight years, but nobody believes me when I say it out loud. The graphics layer for Dwarf Fortress has been running on a second core, or, or was running on a second core, and has been running on a second core for the last, uh, since version 47, I think? Um... Basically, since the last time they added a lot more sprites, uh, Tarn changed the graphics code so that all of the rendering and all of the UI ran on a separate core. So Dwarf Fortress has actually been duo core for quite some time now, contrary to popular belief. The second thing is now, if you go into uh, your game options and you scroll down a wee bit and go to experimental, uh, multi-threading is available. That 
multi-threads all of the code for uh, Dwarven Line of Sight. But if you want to hear people talk more about this topic, I recommend talk or watching the videos that I've uploaded with Putnam, uh, where she talks about optimizing the game's code, because uh, basically everything that she's said, which I take her word for it, um, is that uh, while... Uh, the term uh, multi-threading sounds very exciting and cool and gets a lot of people very hopeful about possible improvements. It is not the most optimal or the fastest or even the best way or even the way that they are prioritizing optimizing the game's code because there's a lot of unoptimized code in the game in general, uh, which is, you know, what you actually want to be optimizing. No, I'm aware. I was just simply covering all of my bases here. Okay. Now dumping items is getting done again. Congratulations on a second or on a, on yet another successful return. Let's let dwarves do some hauling for a little bit and get all this stuff put away. We've also got all of this stuff that needs to get put away, which is gonna take a bit, so. Thank you, Raging Cave. We've also got all of this clothing that still needs to get done. A lot of dwarves are claiming new clothes. Yeah, they will, but other dwarves will come and take them and put them into stockpiles, so you have to be very sneaky and smart about your stockpile management if you want it to work. They also, um, it's mostly armor stands that they use, uh, but weapon racks will also work. They're just less effective. I've seen them work less consistently. I'm not sure why they don't work as much. You just get your head about trying up the most of, to be the most efficient and uh, take long breaks and forget things. Just remember that Dwarf Fortress is kind of a game like designed to be the anti-efficiency game. Um, the game ev the game is largely designed to make it almost impossible to be <laughs> super efficient, um, which is part of the beauty of the game. I think it's because it's like you know it's a it's a colony builder certainly, and it's the granddaddy of colony builders in many ways. But it's got almost more in common with God games. And if you treat Dwarf Fortress more as a God game, where it's like yeah you're giving the dwarves loose suggestions and sometimes they listen to you. If you treat it more like that, I find people tend to get more out of it, because yeah it, it can be really cool to try and make as optimal forts as possible. But that's like the thing that you do not first, especially if you, like you say, you, you're taking lots of, you take lots of breaks. Um, I would say just kind of go with Armok and let, let things fall apart horribly a couple of times and just try to tell an interesting Mad Libs story. And then, you know, maybe if you're doing like three forts in a row, maybe the third one you, you go in and try and, you know, be super optimized. But that's just me talking and I don't always have the most popular opinions on playstyle in this game. Also, the Infinite Furnaces is a really good name. Whoa! What was that? Oh. I always forget that that exists. <laughs> Somebody bought something on Humble. I think it was Slice and Dice if I squinted correctly. Congratulations, Master Spike, on your seven stream streak. Whoa! What was that? Ah. Hobo bought Train Sim World. Wait, really? Can I read that correctly? Hobo like trains? Did I learn?
Want to make an uh, archaeologist who uncovers the lost forts of his clan. Ooh, that, that could be fun. That would be a fun adventure mode playthrough. Go in with specific goals of artifacts to recover. I'm now in an ad break, apparently. Do you like mindless games to play while baked off your skull? Yeah. I would tend to agree about that with some train games, that's for sure. It's really interesting to me. I've been getting more and more and more. Yeah, gamer ads are hysteric. They're something, aren't they? Gamer as an aesthetic is one of the goofiest things in the last 15 years. <laughs> or rather, gamer, gamer as an aesthetic, morphing into influencer as an aesthetic to me is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I was like, yeah, I'm an influencer, but I don't own any of that shit. <laughs> Although I'm pretty small fry in comparison to a lot of people, I think. Um, you get the dwarf fortress to a friend and his fort was going well. Tell it encountered a were crocodile. Sounds lovely. Sounds like uh, they should uh, put a, a sign on the front of their, um, on the front of their fortress saying, caution, the pets are bitey. Do not show up during feeding hours. <laughs> Please avoid during full moons. May end with uh, missing limbs. Really? Still? Well, hopefully um, it's not something that happens too frequently. A devilish potato wants you guys to post beers, Jaren. Imagine being in this, uh, the any of these bedrooms, and just at any point, a sheep or a goat could just walk into your bedroom. I think I should remove <laughs> these from the bedrooms. Not that it's actually a problem, it's just, man, I would not want to just be... It would, actually, it would be like growing up again. So growing up, um, my neighbors right next door to our apartment had uh, cows, like um, cow, slaughter cows and some milk cows. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> They, uh, occasionally would get spooked by a bear, right? Bear would get into their field and run around. Usually this was fine. They would just, um, you know, walk to the other side of the field and ignore them. However, every now and again, the bear would corner them and they would try and like, you know, keep their distance as cows do. Because they're, they're relatively smart creatures. And this would often end with them charging directly through their barbed wire fence that wasn't actually strong enough to stop them from charging through it, but would definitely deter them from doing so and they'd flatten the fence. The result usually ended with me waking up and looking out my window and mom shouting, mom, there's a cow. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's, it's when you have a cow that you raise for three or four years and then take it to the slaughter and uh, have a very large supply of burgers and then invite the neighbors over for a barbecue. They were pretty great, actually. They were nice neighbors, I miss them, but uh, they were an older couple. It was it was a hobby farm. They had like four or five cows at any given time, and like a couple um, miniature ponies and some stuff like that. In an apartment? No, this was where I grew up. Um, in like on twenty acres of property. <laughs> it wasn't quite twenty. It felt like twenty because we part we we borrowed part of my neighbor's property. It was it was about uh, it was about eight acres of property that I grew up on in the middle of nowhere. Um, and. One of my neighbors was uh, were, were millionaires, and they had very, very fancily manicured gardens and a full-time gardener. He was there seven days a week. Um, I feel, felt like it. He was actually there five. He was there 40 hours a week. 
Um, and uh, then my other neighbors were a mix of seniors and hobbyist farmers. Why have so many streamer icon that are modified streamer icon? You mean like your profile picture? I don't know, people like NASA? There, there are like, okay, so people are crazy space travel fans and I get it. it it's, it's pretty cool tech. It's not generally something I pay much attention to, but it, it is cool tech. That too, yeah. Identifiable. I mean, it, I mean, I would say it's probably smarter to have a NASA icon as your Twitch logo than it is to have, let's just say, a Pokemon emote. It's probably smarter to do that. And the reason I would say that is Nintendo is a bunch of crazy Sue Happy morons that somehow haven't noticed that Twitch exists and lots and lots and lots of people have Pokemon emotes. And to be honest with you guys, I'm kind of waiting for the day that they notice and then a lot of people get really mad that all their emotes get taken down. The first time I really started thinking about this was because I used to know a streamer who, like, his whole channel was themed after po a, po a Pokemon. And, um... Let's just say that he tried to put a bunch of his emotes up for sale as stickers, and within, like, hours, they got taken down. <laughs> so, you know. It's not distinct? Yeah, who cares? Some people like cheap branding. And just using something that's recognizable and free and legal to use is actually not a bad way to go about it. Like, I'm not a cop. I'm not going to tell Nintendo. I'm just kind of amazed they haven't done anything about it yet. Like, genuinely. Um, I'm also going to go up here and do a bunch of craft shops. And I'm going to do... Bone... Crafts? Let's just do... 200 because I guarantee I'm gonna oops nope that's collect sand not bone crafts whoops uh, I'm just gonna do 200 because you know I guarantee we're gonna have it and totems and um I don't know 80 actually it's kind of funny I have a very strict rule in life which is don't talk to cops and I actually have to talk to cops soon <laughs> I have to call block watch because my building is setting up block watch and that's something I've been assigned to do, so. It's weird. Is it better to put any rock uh, floor than smooth floor? Uh, rock floors are, or built, constructed floors are higher value by default than smooth floors, so yes, it is worth it. But use blocks, don't use boulders. Unless you're just trying to get rid of the boulders. Gross. It is what it is. <laughs> There's some busy ass dwarves. Okay, so we are get finally getting rid of a lot of the weird surface refuse that's super heavy. Is constructed wood better than smooth rock? All constructed floors are higher value than smooth floors. Because smooth uh, constructed floors are generally roughly the value of um, engraved smooth floors, unless they're masterwork. But constructed floors can then also be engraved. So constructed floors are just higher value. Some people seem to think that like, wood is lower value than stone, it's really not. <laughs> mm, okay, actually, let's just dig this out. Let's act actually, no, let's channel this down. Let's do it this way. Also, wood? Beautiful material to build out of in this game. It gets really cool colors, especially with the cavern trees. Let's try to widen this hallway a little bit. Oops, that's the wrong tool.
<laughs> They're too busy whacking emulators right now. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Although, admittedly, the Switch slash DS emulator, in my opinion, makes sense that they whacked it because they were talking privately in comms um, to their patrons about how they were actively making sure that games that were not out yet that had that were like stolen quite literally um like leaked games would would run on their emulator so kind of get it i mean it, it sucks for the emulation community but i don't know i can't mm, mm, I, mm. I mean it's it's not like they're gonna take out nesticle anytime soon sure you, you could probably still use nesticle right like good old-fashioned testicle on your desktop to play nintendo games <laughs> I'm wrecking your streak almost. Well, I didn't. Hi, Diamond. How are you doing? Also, all of this... Uh, speaking of wrecking things, all of these uh, j calling jobs right now are wrecking my frame rate. I'm prepping to increase the population up to... Because we've increased the population up to 400. So... See how much more of the population goes up. How's the Moses project going? Currently on hold, but um, I would say well, overall. Diplomacy. The mayor finally meets with the Baroness Consort, and they still want me to rank up in society, and I'm going to say, nah. I don't know if I'm ever going to in this fort, actually. God help you? With what? A miasma in the middle of the room? Or something else? We're gonna wait until all these cabinets are put in first. Doesn't work when you click on it. Um, how are the moods in your fort doing? If they're really bad, that might be a source of your problem. <laughs> um, if they're fine, then no, no, it's fine. You only have three unhappy dwarves? Well, then it's fine. Like, honestly, it's, it's fine. If it's if your dwarves are, like, falling apart mentally, I would say, yeah, it's pretty bad. If they're doing okay, then it's fine. No real issue there. I find that having a lot of minecarts can really wreck dwarves' moods. first fort you accidentally flooded it's a very common uh end to people's first forts i will say that let's just watch this dwarf walk around and see what a day in a life of a dwarf in this fort is like I've definitely accidentally flooded a number of forts, not just my first one. It must have been Stump, is a book this dwarf decided to stop and read. 
It must have been the stump is um, a, a clear diamond bound codex. Uh, it, the written portion consists of a 20 page short story entitled It Must Have Been Stump, authored by Stodier. The work has no particular subject, and the writing has a clear evidence of a compassionate being. Also, do not mind the miasma, it's fine. Um, the writing is uh, compassionate, yet it is very rigid overall. Prose is not awful, but not very good either. Dwarf takes a break to go eat. Um, and I'm going to go up a job. I need 10 bismuth bronze goblets. Set, sets of, 10 sets of bismuth bronze goblets. Do pots have lids? If they have food on them, for them, if they have food in them, yes. If they don't have food in them, no. It's mostly just an aesthetic thing. Content after eating a wonderful di dish. Wants to practice craft, though. Gonna go pick up equipment. Probably get some new gear. New clothing, likely. I feel like this walkway needs to be less populated. This is a very busy walkway currently. Like, I think, actually, this should connect to here. That wouldn't be too hard to do either. Is there some dig benefit of digging deeper like better resources? I don't know. Is there? Feel better, Creed. How do you get codexes to have more than one page? Uh, dwarves can't write books in fortress mode that are more than one page. You have to steal them. Which kind of sucks, to be honest. Are there plans to change that? Yeah. It's technically a bug. <laughs> it's on the bug report list. So uh, eventually, yeah. Um, all right. I wish I slept more last night, but I know this might sound crazy, but I, I kind of uploaded videos the last few nights when I should have not been doing that. My God. How many animals are we still butchering? Oh. All of the animals I had set to butcher have been butchered, so that's good. That is very good. Um, I'm going to slaughter the one final bull calf, and I'm going to um, snip, snip a bunch of lambs. And a couple of my bulls as well, and sheep. Just drink dwarven wine and it'll keep you up. I'll, I'm drinking coffee. Although last night I had um, some herbal tea with shochu in it, and it was very good. Kind of similar. Although that put me to sleep, not didn't keep me up. At this point, the reclaimed overseers are just trying to build this into a city. And once all these hauling jobs are done, the frame rate will come back. Same with all these, you know, rotten meals. 
Then I think we should give the, the dwarves like a season's break or something. Basically until the next traders. We're into midwinter. I think we usually trade with the elves in the spring. Okay, let's do this. Cool to see how far the game has come. Yeah, no, it's been a fun fort to run so far. I think my biggest regret about this fort, though, is that I am quite literally just ignoring the Forgotten Beasts, because they are pretty cool. But, um... I just... <laughs> I'm... It, it's just not what I'm focusing on right now. I do like Forgotten Beasts a whole lot, though. So all this furniture up here has been built. That's good. Dwarves can start putting their clothes away. I'm seeing stuff happening much more efficiently now too, which is also good. Like stuff just is getting done quicker. Okay, so let's just make all these bedrooms available, except for that one that isn't. If I could... I don't think I'm going to worry about assigning the children bedrooms because their moods are doing fine. I know, they're so nice. Like, it, it really gives the fortress like a city feeling, right? Like, really, really does. Especially, you know, with, like, the sheep and the elephants grazing out in the caverns, you know? Lovely. Well, they do eat. They just um, eat insects and things. Because the thing that you don't... One of the things that you don't really see in Fortress Mode is there's literally, literally bugs everywhere. <laughs> um, and things like pigs and chickens are actually eating insects that are around. Um, animals that eat insects, you do see the insects pop up briefly. Um, so they are eating. The game just doesn't make the player manage that. You mean my, um, my, my, my giant cougar? <laughs> is, is that the war pussy that you're talking about? Or is this just the, uh, the, the, the sickness meds kicking in? <laughs> You know what, let's give some of the kids bedrooms. Why not? Says here has that one. Child. Child. It's a baby. We won't worry about the baby. You can share with mom. Child. Yeah, fuck it. Baby can have a bedroom too. They just won't use it until they're a child. There you go. Done. Literally everybody's bedroomed. We're going to need to make that number go up, but let's just let them work their way through the majority of the rest of my jobs because I think I'm going to pause them from collecting webs for a little bit. Um, to free up some more jobs. Uh, I do have that wrestler squad chill still training, right? Yep. A lot of these dwarves are in a... Well, except for Dodok. A lot of these dwarves are actually in a better state of mind now. So as good as the name the Infinite Furnaces is, I think I'm going to just simply kick this squad out of existence. Go take a break, dwarves. Go drop all your old ass clothes. Go get new clothes. Go be happier-ish for a little bit-ish, like this one, who just um, dumped 
um, a decent amount of your clothes, and they're all going to go get new ones. Here's the thing, right? There is a folder inside of every single Dwarf Fortress save that says how many vermin exist in a world, including the total population of things like spiders. Um, I had a world once that had over a billion cave spiders in it, <laughs> which I think is really funny. I just, I, I like that the game keeps track of the total populations of spiders in a world. Let's go make some bedrooms back here. So they're technically constant? Technically. I don't think it's possible for them to go extinct, though. So don't worry about burning your world with fire. The game has made sure that that's not really a plausible option. Unless you, like, mod them out of the game. But then you'll never have silk, so. Although I think there's a silk worms mod, but I could be mistaken. Unfortunately, as awesome as silk worms sound, they do not, in fact, come with a holy hand grenade. Um... You know, just I, I feel I feel the need to clarify that. Nor can you fire or throw an exploding farting grandma at your enemies with them. You need those eighty cats to keep things clean. You know, cats are like I understand why people use cats in Dwarf Fortress. Cats are like a mechanic that I almost refuse to consistently have in large quantities in my fort because I would just rather not know how many vermin are in my fort um, and just not worry about it than clean up dead vermin constantly. Um, that's just me. You don't have to be like me, but that's how I work and that's how I operate. So I think something I might do is go to my um, corpses pile and assign some wheelbarrows to it. Because that would speed up the process of transporting heavier bodies to the stockpile. In this fortress, I have like one. But I never go out of my way to get cats, and I usually geld them immediately. I just... I've never found the amount of food that vermin consume to be enough of an issue that I care. And I, like, I if they if they migrate in and they have names, like, yeah, okay. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll allow some cats. But um, I'm very careful about keeping my cat populations low because the number of times I've had a cat, like, run out of my fort during a siege and then die in an open doorway, the number of times I've had that happen is, like, enough that I just, I, it's a bit of a liability. And you can't really pasture them consistently because they leave pastures a lot like dogs. I prefer to have dog. I like having dogs around because at the very least dogs can be trained, but. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Traction benches. Traction benches galore. I think this Ford is starting to get some traction. What do you need? This dwarf has been in hospital for a while. Wrist is fractured. Was placed in traction and then removed from traction. And now is just getting repeatedly cleaned and evaluated because they have an infection and a broken wrist. They have an overlapping fracture and they need one of these built to not die. So... They're also great vermin collectors. That's oddly specific, the pet falcons thing. Hmm. 
Well, actually, let's remove you from that, give you orderlies, obviously. Uh, engravers. Some plant workers. Uh, I'm in an ad break. Do volcanoes refill over time? Yes, they'll also en endlessly overflow if you uh, cut the edge off of the top of the volcano. Receiving a phone call. Hold on a second. Cheese for everyone. You know what's a wild thing? Is receiving a phone call from a human being that you know in the current year. That is, it's really weird when that happens. Uh, that, that was um, a member of the community garden that I'm part of. And uh, he is giving me a bike in exchange for help. Uh, he's 80. Uh, he used to race bikes in Germany. <laughs> Uh, and when he moved here like 30, 40 years ago or something, he bought a uh, new bike for himself. Uh, it's a very nice road bike and he's giving it to me for free um, in exchange for whenever I'm at the garden and he's at the garden, he wants me to help him dig and uh, move dirt around, which is like a couple minutes of work here, a couple minutes of work there. Uh, the other day I helped him turn all of his garden beds so that he could start planting seeds. Because um, he had a stroke recently. He's not very mobile these days. So I'm helping out a senior in exchange for a free bike. Um, which honestly, I probably would just do anyway if he asked. So 
Um, yeah. So I do currently have a bike, but it is a mountain bike. It's not the best for riding on a road. It also is in desperate need of some new parts. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, we are still working on bedrooms, obviously. Let's see. Did I miss anything in chat? Did, did, did you crush any important messages, Diamond, that you want to highlight? If anybody asked me questions while I was in the phone call, just repost them. Uh, would minecarts be the dwarf equivalent of bikes? Ooh. Hmm. Well, no. I mean, I would say minecarts are like the the dwarf equivalent of like. I I want to say go karts, but like they can't drive them. Like, what is something you can't drive that's used for transport? I mean, minecarts? I I don't know because they can't actually steer them. In adventure mode, you can have mounts. I would say mounts are probably the dwarf fortress equivalent. Actually, that's a good one. Sled. It's the it's it's the it's the dwarven equivalent of sled. N you know, I felt like I was gonna die in an Uber a couple of times. Uh, Gerbola specifically when I was taking Ubers in Boston for PAX East. Um, but I've never actually died in an Uber, not yet anyway. So I don't think that it's a good equivalent for Uber. But sleds definitely. That sleds sleds work. Maybe ski lifts. <laughs> Forklifts? Actually, forklifts aren't a bad one. But I, I think that the Dwarf Fortress equivalent of bikes would be mounts in adventure mode. No, because if you step in front of a self-driving Tesla, they stop. I don't know if you've ever seen... Like, okay, so if you want to laugh your ass off, go look up the people who are protesting against self-driving cars and self-driving taxis in San Francisco by walking up to them at stoplights, taking a traffic cone, and putting it on the hood of the car. It literally just makes them have a conniption fit and they completely shut down. And uh, then the people running it literally have to send somebody out to remove the cone so that they can turn the car back on. <laughs> anyway, just just thought I'd just put that out there. Very funny. There's a lot of good images on the internet of that shit. Why, why am I in Chicago? What? No comment. <laughs> because funnily enough, like, like, you know, all those great images of like a self-driving car hitting somebody, stopping the person falling over and then them driving over them because there isn't a person there anymore that they can see. If you put something on the dashboard, they stop. So if you sit on the dashboard, they're done. Um, I was going to start building... Right, rock doors. What kind of rock doors am I making? Phthalate, that works. All right, how are these dwarves doing? Storing owned items. This is what I love to see. I love seeing dwarves with this. Store owned item. It means they're just putting shit away. It's like, ah. Um, I do not have... Well, actually, there, there is a copy of this world, but it's a bit old. Um, on the Discord in the save sharing room. Uh, there is a save for Subtle Scribe. I don't have a save for this one yet. There's actually not that many hauling jobs happening right now, which is good. To conduct meetings, to construct buildings. Holy shit, we need to sort that out. 67. Oh boy. I mean, that's probably it. Okay, let me check something. Ah, that, that'd be why. Refuse stockpiles completely full. You had to build a bank to get your dwarves to store items, a room with a lot of cabinets that are the size of office zones? Like, bedrooms? Why didn't you just put them in bedrooms? <laughs> 
Because that's that seems a wee bit redundant to me. I, I don't know. I want to just give them a more direct route. It's a 38-year-old fort. I have never had this problem with a 38-year-old fort. Um, pro tip, go to your refuse stockpile, okay? Go to finished goods, type, and then just type in where. Add all the clothing types. Then go to quality. And remove everything below exceptional. If you're in a fort that old, they will throw out all tattered clothing that isn't actively claimed by a dwarf. Meaning any clothing that stays on the floor for more than a couple of minutes, when they get unclaimed, they will just throw it out. Gift command is dwarf, yes. Yeah, I have enough stockpile space, but I have nowhere near enough stockpile space, and I didn't really intend on making one. I just need to deal with these moods now. So, we'll get there. Are there any places for the community to post forts? Uh, like, okay, so when you say post forts, you mean screenshots to show people, or do you mean, like, to share saves? Uh, DFFD, if you're looking to just share saves. Uh, Dwarf Fortress File Depot. Right there. This is the, uh, you can keep track of everything. Um, wait for some, send me his address. It'll allow you to keep track of everything and, um, keep, or keep track of your files and, uh, send stuff to friends. Uh, it's, it's been a community web, community run website for a while. So just keep in mind, it does run slow sometimes because servers are not cheap, but it is the, the best option and has been the best option for a while. Why have a refuse pile that big if you have lava to destroy it? Because I don't always want to destroy everything that's in the refuse stockpile. Like, I mean, if you want to automatically destroy everything in the refuse stockpile, okay, but... Like, what? And also because this lava isn't exactly accessible right now. Here's the thing, if you want to automate garbage removal, literally just hook it up to a minecart. That'd be your fastest way to automate garbage removal. I might actually automate it for clothing, but not for, uh, like, body parts, because sometimes I want to, like, remove bones and stuff from here, and, um, put those into, um, actually, yeah, let's just automate this for clothing. <laughs> I should just do that instead of saying it. Um, but, uh, because some, uh, or, or rather... Um, the thing with automating, uh, refuse stockpiles is, uh, is we are constantly getting attacked by dwarven invaders. I don't want to remove dwarf corpses from this stockpile, but I also don't want to accidentally destroy my own dwarves corpses. So I could do like two separate stockpiles or something, but eh, whatever. I just, I generally don't need the refuse stockpile that much. Um, this is kind of a unique situation because we got attacked a couple times and I was being lazy and not keeping track of things. 
Um, but uh, that's not going to happen too much. Um, this is literally just going to be for close. And uh, I need to put a minecart in this. Let's just use that one. What's up, Ciro's game? How's things? Captured animals, trogs, and bearmen and women, and I can do something with them. Can you do something with them? No. Um, there are many things in Dwarf Fortress where I feel really bad saying this, just being like, nope, there's nothing you can do with them. And the reason is, is there's a lot of parts of Dwarf Fortress that are very underdeveloped, right? And the reality of having large parts of the game that are very underdeveloped is there will be times where you will have a thing and you go, man, it seems like I should be able to do something with this. And it's because, yes, at some point you should be able to do something with that. But right now, unfortunately, you can't do anything with it. Um, and that is one of those cases where animal people are horribly underdeveloped and it sucks. And that just is what it is. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Ooh, I just thought my game crashed. Um, I'm going to do a thing. I'm actually going to use a traffic zone for once. This is going to be a lower priority traffic zone. I'm not actually going to make it a don't go here. I can still go here. That's fine. But basically, I want them to go this way. Because it's much more direct. See? It works. I mean, it'll quiet down this hallway quite a bit. Um, you can set them free, sure. Uh, you could chuck them all over a small cliff and they'll run away. Or you can um, build the cages, connect the cages to a lever, and then um, pull the lever and that'll release them. That's usually what I do. There you go. See? It's working. So clothing is just getting automatically dumped now. Just goes into that stockpile down there, gets put into this, and thrown. Um, okay, so two things about Mef's mods. One, Mef didn't make any of his mods. They were stolen mods made by other people and half the time not credited. Two, um, as far as I know, that mod was packed in with masterwork um so you'd have to find the original source of the mod because masterwork has been removed from all official sites and masterwork also hasn't been updated since 2017 and none of the mods alongside of it have been updated since 2017 and i'm also pretty sure that that mod used the alchemy skill which has been removed from the game entirely so it's not going to get updated for version 50. Um, the reason you can't find it, like I said, is because it was removed from the internet. Certainly. Still in the DF50. Absolutely. But Mef didn't make that mod, right? So if Mef didn't make that mod and it was requested to be removed by the creator, which was the case for a lot of his mods, um, it is very unlikely that you'll be able to actually reacquire it. Let's just sell a bunch of these robes. Also, why the heck are you still playing Masterwork? <laughs> the heck? 
I know that like mod loader packs are nice for people, but geez. Um, I mean, he delayed the release of Dwarf Fortress by like half a year, so. It's what happens when you... If you plagiarize and steal people's work without credit, it devalues the rest of your work almost entirely. And that's what he did. So, it sucks. I don't like talking shit about the guy because he's a nice enough dude, but like... He made some very, 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 very basic mistakes in the art world while referring to his work as his and calling himself an artist. Um, and while he states on the internet that he never called himself an artist, he did take a job working for Kit Fox as an artist. So <laughs> if anything, I would say it's Kit Fox's fault for not doing their due diligence. But at the same time, I it just is what it is, you know. It's not really Deep Dwarf Fortress lore. This is from like three years ago. Uh, Mef was a, a prolific modder of Dwarf Fortress. Uh, by that, I mean he made a mod pack. Uh, he took money on Patreon for the mod pack. And whenever people asked, he just said, I made it, basically. It was very... And it, unfortunately, I think what it actually was, was it, like if I were to bet, if I'm, I'm going to be generous here and give him the benefit of the doubt, I would say that it was likely... Um, like a a language barrier thing right like he was he's a german he speaks german he doesn't speak english fluently um like his english is fine but it's not great uh, or was fine but not great I, I haven't spoke to him in a while i'm sure it's improved but um it it kind of sucks well i mean every single item graphic had to be thrown out do you know how catching live fish works Vaguely, <laughs> it's I've literally never really interacted with that mechanic in the game because it's always struck me as being so bizarre and pointless. You build a fishery shop and then you make animal traps, if I'm not mistaken. Then animal traps are used to catch live fish. Don't ask me what to do after that because I don't actually know. That's like the one, th the one mechanic I've never interacted with in this game really. It's also why I... Ooh, okay. I want the giant great white stork for Lamau's. There we go. Bought a giant great white stork from the elves. May it bring us all the babies. It can go hang out in the big... In the big critter uh, petting zoo. In the prison. Good news, everybody. We've acquired Big Bird. Okay, how are we doing on work orders? <laughs> okay. Um, just gonna kill this traction bench job. Gonna also kill these. Uh, get rid of the make totems job. Get rid of this job. Get rid of this job. Do not care if my mayor wants it. I'm just getting rid of jobs right now. Uh, that I keep. All these I keep. Fellite doors we can keep. Uh, that will keep. That will keep. Actually, no, that will kill. Um, that's what I'll keep. Because you really liked it? Well, I'm glad you liked it. Like, me talking about stuff that he did isn't like saying that you're not allowed to like the result. It's just, that's why it's hard to find now. And also why I kind of don't really support the use of it, but, you know. Your morals are up to you, mate. 
He made the pack, not the mods, and not the vast majority of the tile set. The vast majority of the tile set was traced from other tile sets or traced from other art he found on the internet. Basically, in the modding world, if you are going to use other people's work as part of your mod, you have to ask them first. <laughs> and he had a problem of not asking people. And that's what got him into trouble. But I would ask you very kindly right now, Shiruz, I don't care how much you like his work, please don't promote it in my chat. That's it. Just don't promote it in my chat. I don't want you to tell people you can try it. I don't want you to give them links on how to find it. If you want to mess around with mods, mess around with mods. I do not promote the use of that mod pack purely because of the amount of money he wasted for the developers of the game. I don't care what you're doing, Chestnut. It's not required, respected, or needed. There are times where being a um, devil's advocate is okay. This isn't one of them. Oh, thanks for banning the bot, Elfie. At this point, the issue is the amount of money he cost Bay 12. Or when you're having, you know, a, an interesting, nuanced discussion about an event, right? And you're trying to keep the debate going. This is a topic I shut down. So because I'm shutting the topic down, the devil's advocate isn't needed. But you are entitled to have whatever opinions on the subject you want. But this just isn't the place for that discussion. I think alchemy comes back with the procedural potions. I doubt it'll be called alchemy. Um, alchemy actually, or the code for alchemy, uh, turned into soap making, <laughs> of all fucking things. Great mod for fucking around. I mean, isn't that what mods are best for, is making a game more sandboxy? Um, or... Hmm. Or Edie. Uh, this one always, like, catches me up. Thank you very much for the 10th month. You're still celebrating? The 800,000 sales or the nearing release of Adventure Mode? Wait, which thing are we celebrating currently? Or I guess re-release of Adventure Mode. Or my frame rate's rising. That's why I'm celebrating. Storf is still in hospital, man. Do I have splints? Yes. Yes, I do. Also, I just realized that um, Laia de Consequendal wanted a soap maker, <laughs> and I completely missed that going up. So I don't actually have any soap makers in this fort right now, because I don't have any soaping industry. That was almost 48 minutes ago. I'm, I feel real bad. Um, what type of dwarf would you like? Uh, we got lots of varieties of farmers. Make soap. I probably should. Right now, I want to make these dwarves unangry. So soap is a thing that we should be doing, yes. Yes, I did get that one done. Great. Farmers find two beard or no beard. No beard? Okay. How about Azir? Well, might as well go all the way. There you go. She often feels filled with joy, is absorbed in delusions of self-importance, is curious and sometimes to her detriment, and tends to ask others for help with difficult decisions. Um, 
She's currently leading a tanning demonstration. Uh, she is somewhat fearful in the face of imminent danger, prefers everyone live as harmoniously as, as, harmoniously as possible, and has a greedy streak, likes to take it easy, uh, is grateful when others help her out, tries to return favors, and doesn't often experience strong cravings or urges, generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity, licks her uh, lips when she's nervous and needs alcohol to get through the working day. Dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. Personally would have the world operate in complete harmony without the least bit of strife or disorder. Believes that the world that it would be a fine thing if all time or leisure time and values nature. Um, likes quartzite, tin, tapazolite, and pigtail fabric. Floodgates and catapult parts and llamas for their jutting teeth. Foul blendex for their goat legs and the sight of the carmine sister and when possible prefers to consume giant one-humped camel cheese and rice beer and sangreo fruit and absolutely hates large roaches. Uh, you have a lover, his name is Udib. Many friends. Many friends, in fact. Multiple close friends as well. Uh, you are a member of the Doctrine of Amethysts who worships the god of mountains. Creepy cat commercial. I'm so sorry. All right, let's make um, let's make a soap industry. I need empty buckets first. Wooden bucket. Let's just do twenty. But uh, I can make ashery and we can... Oh, actually, no, I can't make asheries, right? Because I need buckets. I need buckets for those as well. All right, then. Um, instead, I will just simply start making ash. Let's make 100 ash. Oh, yeah, I have a well somewhere. I have a well. I have a well in my tavern, actually. Tis over here. Um, and it's this little puddle here, which I'm going to need to refill pretty soon. Um, the thing that I kind of want to do is use this to fill it. The problem with using this to fill it is it's, um, well, let's just say extraordinarily highly pressurized. <laughs> I have to be kind of careful about how I use it. Um... Music just stopped. Ah. What? Uh. Hey, what? Oh, I had a second minute to arrive. I heard. So what happened in the Millennium Fort? If you haven't figured it out yet, I don't think I can explain it to you. Well, all right. The Puke of Tusks. I uh, just equipped a sheep's wool hood from the dwarf he just killed. Or found dead? Huh. Come on, dwarves. Get here in a more timely fashion. What was that? Giant, oh. Giant monitor lizard, damn. Look at him go. Fighting with the giant monitor lizard. Wonder what the resolution of that monitor lizard is. The, the poor tunnel wheel wild, the puke of tusks. Hasn't killed anything in a couple hundred years. Um, dwarves are now running out to go grab the gear from that the the seam previously deceased music. Why would anybody use sound sense in the year 2024? What? Crazy question. Absolute nonsense. Some migrants have arrived. As if shit wasn't strange enough right now. What, monitor lizards? I have no idea. Okay, well, why would anybody in version 50 use sound sense? All of the sounds are moddable. Every single one of the notifications can have a sound associated with it, if it wants, um, which is a whole lot of fun, frankly. 
Um, it seems like the migrants are actually doing a quite a quite a good job. But yeah, does it look like I'm playing 47.05? I never used Town Sense before. I always hated it. I, th I thought it was awful. <laughs> um, so I will never use Sound Sense. After a, a good healthy beating. Um. The dwarves have taken out the very weak and pathetic Minotaur. Eh. I mean, I could have set it up so that the Fort Militia dealt with it, but eh, didn't really care. Wasn't really the priority. I knew they'd get it done. Besides, most creatures are extraordinarily weak in this video game. The Doctrine of Earth uh, now requires a temple complex. That shouldn't be too difficult. Elfie is making an artifact. Probably grabbing items, mostly. Has claimed a craftsworth shop, too, so... It's going for items. Probably metal bars. Um, I don't take suggestions is what I think of your idea. But that's probably what I'm going to do anyway, so... I appreciate the suggestion, but I, I don't really need them. <laughs> and, uh... I... It's not what I do, so... I already have a planned idea on how to refill the water, and... Like I said, I, I don't really need your ideas. I don't have any problem with the ideas, but it's just not necessary. So because this is entirely sealed in, aside from the well, what I can do is just be really, really ballsy. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I mean, it's it's a show about where, where if you want to watch Dwarf Fortress, you can, and occasionally I take suggestions, but it's just, if I took every suggestion that people gave me and responded to every suggestion, I wouldn't build forts. Chat would. Um, if you want to build a fort, you can build a fort. That's totally fine. Go build a fort. Um, but I'm, it's it's the way I've always ran my stream. It's, it's not what I do. Drill! Thank you very much for the... Or Drid, rather. Not Drill. Drid! Thank you very much for the raid of 110. That's a massive raid, dude. Hope your stream was good. You still uh, bashing away at the Might and Magic games? Or have you moved on to something else? I was thinking. Welcome to the stream. Hope your day's been good. Do I even have any floodgates? Nah. We'll just use a door. It's fine. No mechanisms either. Look at that. CDDA today? Go on, Chip. You guys want to see a, a, a good variety of interesting video games of the complex and deep? Go give Dredd a follow. Mods, can I get a shout out, please? I know there's a couple of you lurking. But uh, thank you very much for the raid. Today's a bonus stream. I, I don't generally stream on Fridays, so. We're going to be swapping games in about 30 minutes here to Path of Acra, because I'm taking part in the um, turn-based fest, which is a uh, Steam sale of very small niche community games of the turn-based variety. We're going to be playing some Path of Acra for that. And chat room can, well, we kind of did get the round of beers, but can I get a round of beers for the Raiders? Please don't drown them. Path of Acra? Yeah, I, 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 I really like Path of Acra. I wonder if uh, the developer's still lurking in the chat. It's like that and Rift Wizard have been the only two games I actively play off stream right now. It's been good. It's been nice to have off stream games. 
It's not something I normally do, so. Yeah, I'm still very, very much waiting for Crux Smash's Path of Acrovid, pulling that out of the YouTube chat. Glad I'm not the only person looking forward to that, to be honest. So we do need to wait for some of those mechanisms to be done. But uh, where is the doctrine of Earth? That is the question. Faith of gold, mountainous fellowship, amethysts. Oopsies, might be this one. Doctrine of Earth. Well, it's already high enough value, so I literally just need to recognize the high priest and appoint a new priest. It's a very popular religion. Um, none of these dwarves are named, so I will give it to the most, the most uh, le uh, 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 legitimate taker. Um, and Elfie Bean has moved moved up to the position of first periwinkle of the Pink Abbey, which is great, <laughs> um, and uh, is still working on an artifact. And did you? What do you need, Elfie? You got two pieces of marble. You need cloth, thread, trees, okay. You need me to butcher something? Stone rock, okay. Leather skin, all right. Free life, okay. Bars of metal, okay. Cloth thread. Uh, let's just try butchering something. I realize I butchered a lot of things, but I think most of those bodies ended up in the, uh, in the dumpster, so. There's giant fireflies outside again. That's mildly terrifying. Uh, religions do not develop while you're playing in fortress mode. They only develop outside of fortress mode, and I'm pretty sure it's also, like, linked to the world's inception. Uh, so religions develop during world gen, and then can be interacted with. They do not develop outside of that. It's <laughs> close to periwinkle blue. Well, would you look at that? Pretty sure it's leather that I actually need. Yeah. Oh, come on. Also, something else I would like to check is let's jump over to trash. Same with, like, Necromancer Towers. Necromancer Towers don't form outside of um, World Gen. Hello. Been a while. Has been a while, Velk. How are you doing? Or Vlack. I'm just, like, butcher butchering. Butchering? Wow. I can't speak today. <laughs> butchering. That's a word that I'm coining here. It is the word of, I didn't sleep well two days in a row. And, um... I want to go to bed early tonight. Thanks for the 36th month, man. Appreciate you. It's been a long time, yeah. 36 months is a long time. I think so, indeed. Uh, if you want dwarves to learn crossbows or uh, archery efficiently, yes, you need an archery range. Elfie needs new socks, apparently. Grabs iron bars. Funny, I've got more. I got higher value bars she could have grabbed. Uh, you cannot tell your dwarves to attack something without having a squad. Sometimes if you need to attack something, I would say make a squad, add, add dwarves that look like they would do well in it, and then tell them to attack the thing. It's a pretty good way of going about it. Some other forgotten beast has come, it's fine. Okay, so she's put that away. It's off again. Oh, how big does it need to be? Um, it doesn't, it, shape and size doesn't actually matter that much. 
Uh, it just needs to connect with a wall. Um, it's more about aesthetics at that point. Dwarf Fortress is pretty loose with its restrictions. Um, one thing I will say is practicing on live targets is seven times faster than practicing on not live targets. I do have a guide on it um, on YouTube, but as, outside of that, yeah, it, it, it's not really a size thing. It's mostly just a matter of like, what do you want it to look like? Right, any interesting artifacts recently? Uh, nothing super stand out. No, not particularly. I think the most interesting artifact that happened in this world wasn't in this fortress, actually. It was a uh, a leather shield named Good Charles after Good Charles who claimed it as a personal treasure, which is quite funny because a number of times there have been images of that artifact on other artifacts and it keeps coming back because it was pretty valuable. That was pretty funny. Um, I don't have anything particularly noteworthy recently, though, no. Let me tell you this. Bone bolts are way more effective on living targets than people realize because the best use for Marks Dwarves, and also I just use Marks Dwarves instead of Bow Dwarves, even though people say Archers, but um, just because they're easier to maintain because you can actually make ammunition for them. But bone bolts are way more effective than people realize uh, at doing what they do best, which is causing bruising and making them drop, making the enemy drop their weapons. Now, if you can consistently cause bru bruising and make the enemy drop their weapons, they will rather quickly, um, like, fall over when you start actually fighting with them properly. But the funny thing is, it's almost impossible to kill zombies with them. So if you happen to have a zombie in your fortress that you say caught in a cage or, you know, something, you assign him to a, well, put him in an area that your dwarves can't access, put a drawbridge in front of him, similar to any kind of silk farm or anything, and then just drop it and tell the dwarves to fight it. You can make some legendary rocks dwarves really fucking fast. Um, so it's also very, 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 very stressful for them. But uh, I'm I'm just saying it's effective, okay? I'm not saying what you should do. I'm just saying it's effective. This is a hurdy-gurdy that's worth like six or seven gauntlets. Six or seven left gauntlets. That's so oddly specific. What's the value of a left gauntlet in this case? Because <laughs> that would depend on the material, right? Oh, look at this giant stork. I like that the stork is just eternally flying underground. It's kind of funny. I said it would depend on the material it was made out of. Military quickly ends up not caring about anything anymore. Most of the dwarves in this fort don't care about anything anymore. But that doesn't mean that they are immune to stress. Trust me, a dwarf that doesn't care about anything anymore is like two-thirds of these dwarves that went from being extremely happy to down to here pretty quickly. So it's not a, like a foolproof keep them all safe thing. Uh, Elfie being the first periwinkle has created Akmish Riril, uh, a marble amulet, and offers it to the new fur boots of pants. Okay. Um, hmm. What else do I need to do? Does the mayor of this fort uh, have fur boots? I had a lot of fur boots, but then the population got bigger than I could reasonably keep up with. Um, so I stopped worrying about it so much. But um, we're now back in that situation where suddenly I... Uh, am, I'm currently just worrying about maintaining a consistency right now. 
But uh, the initial populations absolutely did. The original owners of this fort cared very, cared very much about sticking with the theme. Uh, the different faction that reclaimed it after the original uh, founding members of this fortress abandoned it um, don't care so much. Yes, I'm just making excuses. No, I don't care. Um, but uh, I, I, I do need to get back to that theme a little bit. The last few days, especially since we've ballooned from like, you know, a very consistent 15 dwarves for the first faction, followed by then ballooning up to like, you know, 200. And now going up to 400 plus um, means that I need to keep up with bedrooms. And that's my number one priority right now. Making excuses for things you do? Well, maybe not. Depends on how you're running your fort, really. But this fort, eh, I don't know. I still think that my favorite negative review for Dwarf Fortress was, Dwarf Fortress is a, is not a story generator. It's fantasy Mad Libs um, for <laughs> people with mental disabilities. At which point, I have to say, I like fantasy Mad Libs and my brain no worky properly on a good day, so I guess, <laughs> you know, here we are. <laughs> it's a game made for me. <laughs> my life and I can do what I want to do what I want to do what I want to. is that what we're saying here why is there a hole there no it's fine hmm It's a story brewer. Okay, throw it all in the still and let it bubble for a little bit. And then when it comes out the other end, if you haven't come up with a story yet, then you're just bad at imagining. Is that, is that what it is? This is a moving image of a streamer. Okay. The streamer is looking at a moving image on a tablet. Okay. The streamer is angry. The stone is laughing at the streamer. Ah, why? What? What is, <laughs> hold on a second. What, what, why is the, what? Why is the stone laughing at the streamer? That's the part I don't get. Some continuity issues with this story. Right, and what up? I also don't own a tablet, <laughs> so <laughs> that part's a little weird. Trying to think of something that was lore accurate. Oh. Hmm. But you can interface with gods. Like you can you can spray you, you can spray? You can spray and pray, yes. You can pray to gods. So if that ain't a computer, I don't know what is. How do you convince the hum plump helmet man in the caverns to join your fort? You can't. If they are labeled as a wild animal, there is no way in vanilla to make them join your fort. If you're using DF hack, there's a script, and I can never remember what it is because I'm terrible at remembering DF hack scripts and literally look them up in real time whenever I use them. Um, so, yeah. You can use a DF hack script to hack it, but in vanilla, there is no way. It's another one of those very underbaked features. Instead, he's just going to run around and die. Although I will say, having a plump helmet men in your fort is probably really disappointing for you if you actually like them. 
And the reason for this is, one, they can't talk, so they get sad because they can't socialize, really. Two, um, <laughs> they're very delicate. And I mean, like, very delicate. Like, I've literally had them die, like, friendly ones that came as part of, like, performance groups and stuff. I've seen them die walking through a dwarven tavern because they get bumped into and fall apart. So... <laughs> if you like them, you might be disappointed, I guess. Uh, this one that is uh, full of clothing needs a cabinet. Also, I missed this completely somehow. Elfie Bean has made a marble amulet. Which is named, um... Akmish. Alright, this... It's apparently still in this stockpile somewhere. What did she do with it? It offers it to us. You know what, I'm just gonna put it into her temple. Which is this very empty, ugly building. And take a few minutes to pretty it up a little bit. Bear, hello. They seem so friendly. Lore-wise, they are the kindest, smartest creatures and the only, like, lawful good characters in Dwarf Fortress, so yeah, I also feel bad for the Gorlax. But um, in this particular fort, we actually ended up with, or not this fort, but this particular world, um, in a previous fort, we had a Gorlax queen and a Gorlax outpost liaison for a bit. Um, which I assume the queen died. She was killed after we we retired that fort. And um, the outpost liaison, I think, defected and became part of the goblins again. Um, and uh, I sent those... Those clips got forwarded to Tarn by um, Clino. And uh, supposedly it's um, reinvigorated Car Tarn's desire to uh, make... or. Uh, do the due diligence to make Gorlax uh, the proper trusted sources of um, kindness, as they always have meant to be. And you know, I'm not, I'm not, this is speculation. This is a thousand percent speculation. But there was a little thing that was stated during the last interview I did with them that I think is very interesting. When they were talking about new features for Adventure Mode and the Adventure Mode patch, Tarn was talking about stuff in Adventure Mode, blah, 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 you know, normal stuff, right? But... There was a thing that Zack said in a passing comment, and Tarn did a thing that he always does. Whenever Zack says something, he's not supposed to, because Zack has a habit of leaking things. He actually leaked who was writing the soundtrack and a few other things in various old interviews I've done. Um, Zack Zach needs some media training, is what I'm saying. Bless Zack soul. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Zack said, and don't forget about the surprises down below. And Tarn said, ah, oh, yes, surprises. And then they kept talking. Um, this is a marble amulet. All craft our ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushioned marble cabochons and decorated with fungi wood. This object is, of course, adorned with hanging rings of yak leather and menaces with spikes of marble, iron, pigtail, and cave spider silk. Well done. Looks like Az finally got out of hospital. Oh, boy. Give these dwarves a break, I'd say. So, that is a thousand percent speculation. 
I don't know anything you guys don't. But man, it'd be cool. I think I need to make my kitchens bigger. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to see another pass um, on the animals of Dwarf Fortress. You know, like, also. I should probably do this now. Uh, we're in an ad break right now, so I won't unpause the game, but I'm going to queue up some furnaces. I would love to see another pass on the animals. Um, I need an empty barrel. Wooden barrel. Um, I would I would love to see another pass on animals. Like, I'd, I'd really, really, really like to see that. Because the whole animals, um, patch era was a good era of Dwarf Fort. What's my favorite animal in DF? So is this a question of what is my favorite real life animal in DF or what is my favorite unique DF creature? Because there are different answers, I would say. Both uh, real life creatures, probably king snakes. Yeah, um, because I like I like king snakes a lot in real life. Um, my favorite DF unique creature. This changes based on mood, which is the hard part. Part, but uh, actually, hold on, Ch swapping it off. Uh, not king snakes. If I'm going to be more gameplay oriented, outside of just like real life animals, uh, giant crabs, because <laughs> all hail the holy crab. In this fortress, the crabs rule the world and we worship the great crabs. Um, do not butcher the crabs or they become eight zombies. Oh god, the crabs, they're taking over. Um, that was just way too memorable. Um, but uh, DF unique creature, probably Gorlax. Water lungs was a fun fort. <laughs> It's a shame that Fortress never made it to its full potential. Well, on the bright side, the moods are moving back up to where they need to be, so that's good. What happened to Water Lungs? Um... This was before any of the real major frame rate increase patches came in. Uh, and the frame rate went down to about 15 because I kept, I had this habit of like pumping a whole lot of lava one layer beneath the frozen ocean um, on a haunted biome and then thawing the ocean to catch animals from the untamed wilds ocean that would only appear in the water. And they were thus never appearing because the water was perpetually frozen. Um, so that kind of made the frame rate shit and combine that with the fact that DF hack didn't work as well at the time in premium. And, um, so there was like a thousand zombies in one of the cave layers. And so the frame rate was about 10 to 15 FPS at the time. Um, I've since reloaded it to see what the frame rate would be like now. And the frame rate now is closer to about, uh, 60, but I just have no desire to go back to it. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It was a combination of I got bored and the frame rate got bad. But it was a fun fort while it lasted. The, the biggest issue I had with it was the surface was extraordinarily hostile. Um, so I basically couldn't go to the surface at all. So it really kind of limited what I could do. Um, it was full of like, a, like constantly agitated and or just giant undead wolves. Um, which, even with a fully trained military, is pretty tough to deal with. Plus the whole time it was raining like like viscous sludge vomit shit uh which did not make the dwarves uh opinions of existence particularly high
sure. You know what? We'll just use Tower Cap. Okay, actually, hold on. Asher. Um. What if it rains alcohol? Dwarves don't like getting rained on. Doesn't matter what it's raining. Would you drink beer that rained in the dirt? I guess is maybe the more real life equivalent response to that question. I'm also just gonna lock the dwarves inside. Keep them a little happier. <laughs> you just walk around slack jawed looking up. Yeah, God. He's so sticky though. But no, there's nothing positive about it raining weird liquids right now. There might be in the future, but right now there isn't. Ooh, actually, hi. We're, we're going to make these fancy in red. Okay, so we made ash. Let's make lye. And soap from Tallo. Actually, hold on. What? That says 100. Okay, so it's uh, 100 lie. I'll just let that run for a minute. I mean, don't do it. Wait, wait until the wait until the the 17th, and then generate a new world, and then get to it. That's always a scary sound. Um, Ashery. No, oh, Cameron Dwellers. Not a concern. It's fine. Forgotten Beast found some caves. Some cavern dwellers. Uh, I don't know. How many people are watching Dwarf Fortress? Let's look at the directory. Uh, currently there are... I don't know. About 300 people watching Dwarf Fort. Um, currently there are 1,257 people playing. According to Steam, at least. So that's obviously not counting... Uh, itch.io players or uh, classic players. You want to know why that is, Cacophony of Stupid? Just because of how long I've been doing it, you know? And also because a lot of streamers that are bigger, um, that didn't end up in my position, just stop playing games when they stop getting viewers from them. And they generally get less viewers as their audiences get bored because their audiences are used to them doing a ton of variety. Uh, I do a little bit of variety, but not much. So, admittedly, when I do variety, um, a lot of people just stop watching and tune out, which, you know, is, has its pros and cons, I suppose. Basically, I, I have a large portion of the audience because I've built my channel around doing that. Which I'm also very lucky that it worked. Okay, there we go. We've got Make Lie. Might as well just queue that up until the game does it itself, which it will eventually, but take a moment. There you go, see? They have it manually now. T9 reacting to the premium trailer. Huh. <laughs> That's... 
One of the more specific ways I've heard of people finding BF. I mean, the thing that you guys need to remember, right? Um, uh, that's actually, it depends on how the streamer runs their chat. Lethal Frag has a perfectly manageable chat box with a thousand viewers because of how he manages his chat. Um, if you encourage spam, yeah, you'll have an unreadable chat. Doesn't matter how many viewers you have. Um, but, uh, one of the, how do I word this? You're still waiting for the, you mean the 17th creed? Um, I, I, I guess at the end of the day, I'm always perpetually amazed that people are still discovering this game. Got into DF watching Crux Smash? That's a large portion of people, I think. I mean, I, st I first installed DF in 2009, but didn't, I wouldn't say, I would say that I didn't learn the game properly until like 2018 or something. It wasn't until way late. Way later that I properly learned the game. I don't want to trade with the humans this year. It's fine. Deep Space, how are we doing? We will be swapping games very soon, though. I know that a lot of you are here specifically for Dwarf Fortress, but when we, sw when we swap games, I would greatly appreciate it if, if, if you stick around. That would be very, very meaningful to me. Uh, apparently, requires lie. Game? What? But I have lie. Make lie. You're making lie. We have plenty of lie. Oh, I see why. There we go. <laughs> I'm just going to make a a lie stockpile. I wonder if I can even do that. I've never tried. Maybe not. Maybe I'd have to do lie buckets. Might be in the food stockpile under extracts or something. There you go. Oopsies. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to here. I'm gonna go to fat and type in tall. Well, I'll just remove all that. I'll go to miscellaneous liquid. Quit it. Also free up a bunch of space in the stockpile too. Um, yeah, I wish that about a lot of things. I wish that more so about alcohol, actually. Looks like it's water buffalo soap. Water buffalo soap and... Probably more water buffalo soap. If I had to bet. Put 40 soap bars in there. <laughs> Giant thrips tallow. Lovely. Giant Thrips Soap. I don't recall killing any Giant Thrips, speaking of. From a YouTube video and bounced off it hard? Yeah. That's fair. Uh, I had a friend recommend it to me after um, I beat a little game called Adom. What's the goal population? Oh, well, it's currently set to 400. I don't, it's not really a, it's not a mandatory goal or anything. It's just, that's what it's currently set to. All right, water buffalo soap at B. 
Got that done. She. And hopefully, we'll start seeing these. So now I need a lever here. Also, thanks for all the follows, by the way. I don't have a notification for it, but it does mean a lot that we're getting a lot of follow. Of course, uh, when Adventure Mode comes out, there will be a bunch of tutorials on the YouTube channel initially, and then after the tutorials on the YouTube channel, it is just going to be a, not a wall, but um, a very large number of tutorials dropping in a short period of time uh, for Adventure Mode, and then me here on Twitch, uh, I will probably just end up streaming about, I want to say, probably seven days in a row. Post-release, if not more. Although I will, like I said earlier, um, have to take a break uh, on the 20th, April 20th and 21st because I have a volunteering thing I need to do, which has been organized months ago, way before the date was announced. And uh, the 21st, I'm doing stuff for my dad's birthday. So I will be a little bit busy over that first weekend, but then after that, it's just going to be a whole lot of adventure mode. But there will be videos every day. It's the closest thing you've played to adventure mode. Yeah, no, I think people have played closer things to Adventure Mode than they realize. What? Why'd that immediately get cancelled? That is bizarre to me. Downward stairway going down to here. Blink, blink, blink. Huh. Okay. Um, well, instead of that, then we'll remove this. Didn't know I streamed. I've been streaming for over 10 years. Bizarre. Like to the point where I joke about how old I am on this in this in for this industry anyway. Played Unreal World? I would say Unreal World is way closer to Adventure Mode. I mean, heck, uh, something like CDDAs. Well, not twice CDDA. I would say Kenshi is the same idea, but very different. Um, games that are like Kenshi are also kind of the same idea, although admittedly quite different. The Mountainous Fellowship. Oh, it's right there. I need to work on that. The highest priority at this exact moment, I want to get this well sorted. So I think the most interesting thing that I've always used Adventure Mode for, which I'll probably end up making a video about, is, it is in my opinion, it is the best way of scouting new locations for forts. Basically, like, look for an area where you're like, yeah, I like these resources. And then make a party of, like, 12 adventurers and go to that location. Walk around that location a little bit. Find the exact spot. Go to a nearby place. Retire that group of adventurers. Well, of course, like, you know, trying to collect some artifacts and getting distracted along the way. And, like, maybe slaying a monster or three. And trying to convince other people to join you. Figuring out who the major actors in the region are. 
once you've done that, um, then found the fort, then retire the fort immediately once you have the seven dwarves there and be like, oh, that's a camp, right? And that camp is ready for adventurers. And then you reclaim those adventures and you, and you adventure back through the general region, getting distracted and doing other things, maybe stealing artifacts from your old forts and those sorts of things. Go to that location and then retire them at the location. But before you retire them at the location that you settled, you ask the expedition leader with one of your adventurers, can we stay for a while? And then when you, assuming they're not starving to death, when you reclaim the fortress, they'll all be there. They'll just be visitors like any other fortress, like um, they'll, they'll be like any poets or bards, so they won't be permanent members, but they can do some basic tasks. I think they can haul, and that's about it. Um, once that's done, you then wait like a year, and they'll petition, almost always petition to join the fort. And then two things happen. You can have some likely very, very, very strong military dwarves to start, or... Gor Gorlax or animal people or bearmen or whatever you decided that adventure squad's going to be. And then once that's done and you have those those characters in your fort, if you get bored of the fort, you can retire it. Like any other fort, right? But when you retire that fort, you can then reclaim those adventurers assuming they didn't die in the fort. Which I think is really cool. So this will overflow my well if I don't pull this in time, and that's kind of fun. Uh, no, but you could ask to join the mil militia if there is a militia commander. I don't think bragging does anything, because you might very well be lying. Alright. Let's hope somebody pulls the lever quick. There you go. And boom. Well done. Still pissed? Uh, not as pissed as you were. So you you know how you wanted to be in the military for a little bit? Well, you kind of ended up in the military and you kind of ended up uh, fighting a bunch of necromancer experiments. You're in a better headspace now than you were, but you're still not great. Um, but you're focused at the very least, so that's a good thing. You were a red angie phase for a minute there. Not anymore though, fortunately. All right, chat. So I lost track of time, and I have to finish up with Dwarf Fort for the day because I am taking part in the turn-based fest, um, playing a game called Path of Acra. So if you're interested in seeing something new and also a game that has almost 100% positive reviews, I think it's had three bad reviews of all, all time, uh, that costs like 12 bucks. It's not currently on sale, but will be on sale uh, soon uh, when it releases out of early access in like a little under a month, a little over a month, yeah little over a month. It's like 30-something days. A uh, game made by a friend of the channel. We're gonna go play some Path of Acro. We're gonna go do a run of Path of Acro. Um, if you're tuning out now, I get it, but maybe if you're feeling charitable, if you don't want to watch, leave the tab up. YouTube chat, you guys don't need to go anywhere because we're keeping the stream running. That being said, say goodbye to the VOD. Just for historic sake. It's a game about building very, very, very overpowered builds. Is what it is. This is actually, this is the entire reason I streamed today, by the way. It's because this was supposed to be on Wednesday, and then I had to reorganize it for the different, anyway. Long story short, this is why we're streaming today. Towards the Trithius has more to do, I think. Well, 
they're pretty different. Because doors, doors, doors are, well, in the fact that 